dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end in time previously on missed opportunities ghosts of salt marsh for those of you just catching up, the party met with Scarin Wave Chaser, the assistant to Councilman Anders Solmore, and provided him with the necessary evidence to depose the corrupt criminal businessman Galen Primewater from his seat on the council. This was done, and no longer having a full council, it was determined that the party would be given one collective seat, a position with historical precedents called the Driftwood Chair. Near the council hall, the party witnessed the execution of two convicted criminals. Well, near execution, at least. One was Saltfoot, the slaver, reaver, wizard encountered by the party in their early adventures. And before she was executed, Saltfoot used her last words to openly condemn and verbally curse Mariah pronouncing her soul and her honor as sunken in the eyes of Ship Suljak, which is one of the factions from the northern city of Luskan. Pirate factions, I should say. Uh, meanwhile, Inaris decided to save the life of the other one prisoner to be executed, a scarred, burly half-orc whose tongue had been removed. Her intervention went unnoticed, and so it was understood by the onlookers to be divine intervention. The crew swiftly abducted said almost dead mute half-orc and brought him back to their ship. No way! Lastly, they ventured back to Crabber's Cove to try to deal with the vampire Jolek, who they had previously and unwittingly released. They found him further from salt marsh as he was beginning to restore an old supposedly haunted mansion they turned down his offer to provide a quote unquote trail of wicked blood that would have led them to reveal a corrupt and evil figure in salt marsh instead they convinced him to take his ploys elsewhere and leave salt marsh or be destroyed it seemed he accepted the ultimatum nevertheless both Nether and Talise spent the night awake in order to keep watch with the old priest, Welgar Brynhand. And it should be mentioned about immediately before bed, um, Sarayan, clad in only her boots and a... <laughs> only her boots! <laughs> <laughs> only a, only her boots and sort of a night shift. Well, now this uh, changes wink, dress. Wink. <laughs> this changes <laughs> the story horribly. <laughs> no, 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 no. Snuck into Melvin's bunk or tried <laughs> to sneak into Melvin's bunk and, and attempted boots. to rob him of his um, oh, notebook. Spell book. Who and, robbed uh, who? <laughs> well, you know, robbing the over. robbing the robber to steal back yeah. her embarrassing love poetry she may have written <laughs> while under the influence of the vampire Jolek. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly embarrassing. The fully illustrated um, love poems. <laughs> illustrated and laminated. He's got I little webby so, yeah. fingies. He's got so his little TVs. That is where we pick off. I believe it is still evening. We have not quite gotten to the morning. I think 
someone mentioned they had more things they wanted to do in the evening. Again, preparations are still being made to um, take off, uh, to set out on your next voyage. But for now, um, things are mostly quiet. I do want to give a shout out, though, before... Um, we uh before we go on to all you wonderful people for your support um let's see uh so pixie gifted sub and 900 bits absolutely incredible thank you so much lock me up um oh like lock ha 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 like john lock anyway thank you for the uh or for the sub that's awesome thank you for subbing um pingu boy 100 bits Amazing, thank you. Big Jim the Fourth, thank you for the sub. Um, and Anonymous, thank you for the sub, whoever you may be. Um, so yeah, uh, that, thank you. Thank you all for the incredible support. It Dark Horse um, 100 as well, isn't it? Dark Horse 100 uh, for... 100, for 100 bits. I did. Yeah. Oh, for, thank you. Thank you for the bits. Uh, <laughs> I, I, let me mention that anything that we are given here, um, your subs, your donations, all of that, we do our best and um, put all of this money we get back into the stream. So the art that you've just seen, we have some upcoming projects that we're going to use the art that's been rotating on the screen for all of these characters, the overlays, everything that makes this stream fun and what it is, um, that's what we invest in. So thank you so much for your support. We love playing D&D &D for you. Thank you so much. Um, so evening is upon the city of salt marsh. Most of you are upon the sea ghost and the what? Sorry, the pixie's fury. Um, Bless and I believe that's where Melvin asked for, uh, after your confrontation, um, Serayan was kicked out of your, uh, of that part of the bunk room told to go to the opposite end of the ship by Mariah, who seems to have gone back up and probably slammed the door to the captain's cabin behind her. Um, a more and more familiar slam to those of you who are spending more and more time on the, on the Pixie's Fury. Uh, that, that, uh, that cabin door, uh, Creon, as the bosun, you repeatedly think, I'm going to need to repair those hinges soon. Uh, you you keep uh, you you think about that repeatedly. Uh, it, it's it's going to wear out a bit quicker than the other doors. So that is where we um, resume. So I leave it to you, Melvin. Um, as as soon as Saran is gone out of sight, I'm going to uh, sit up in my bunk and um, pull out some lead based ink and um, a spare sheet of paper from my my scholars pack. And I'm going to ritually cast uh, Illusory Script and begin copying those um, sonnets onto the spare piece of paper in Illusory Script so that I am the only one who can read them. To everyone else, it's going to look like a very dry explanation of the wildlife that we saw in the swamp when we went to the Lizard Folks uh, camp. Wow. <laughs> That's some level 100 creeping going there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like... I, I I just like knowledge. It's and not poetry is knowledge. knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and uh, now you have it, and no one else will ever be able to read it. And you just <laughs> do you even read it? Do you just like roll it up and just like hold it? Just <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I fold it and put it away in my pack Monster. with the rest of my papers. You just. Monster. He just wants to understand Sarayan someday. That's the real goal. Mm. Yeah. Well, joke's on you. She <laughs> is an enigma that cannot be cracked. <laughs> you can't go turring on her ass. <laughs> oh, um, nice, nice reference. Thank you so much. Alan Turing. Deep pool. Can't yeah, go deep turring pool. on her ass. Deep can't go turring here. on her ass. Um, so. After that, Melvin will cuddle his book and go back to sleep, uh, dreading the morning. It's... For what it's worth, uh, Sarayan <laughs> does not sleep. And she spends the night staring up at the ceiling, lying in her bunk, seething. Which I understand will likely I need to roll for exhaustion at that point. See seething. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> I don't. 
<laughs> oh my god, Peter. <sighs> okay. Yeah. So Talisa so. and Nether are spending the entire night um, patrolling the town. A lot of tired people in the party. I know. Morning comes, they return. And um, I will ask... Uh, Did we keep the town safe? Welgar will look. And... Well, if it be a vampire, it will be hard to say. They kill quiet like. Definitely a vampire, Welgar. Kill a man next to his sleeping wife, so... If you heard any screams in the next couple hours, I'd say maybe we helped. Or maybe the town just got lucky. Or maybe you did what you said. It was good to have done something about it at any rate. Are you being truthful? The... Hmm? Are you being truthful uh, with us, Nether? Yeah. Or are she you? Doesn't, she doesn't like the idea of um, the problem being kicked down the road. So you know, <clears throat> regardless okay. of the vampire's current disposition, they're immortal. It's very likely that the next time he's encountered, he'll be a horrible despot ruling over a pocket dimension somewhere in the Shadowfell. Despot. <laughs> That's despot. Part. There, wolf. <laughs> well, he will, um, despot, despot, accept your explanation, whatever. but will be, um, he will look at you for a long moment. Well, Gar Brian Hand will. <clears throat> His old, grizzled features just kind of still in the night, long beard flowing in the wind, and hard, uh, well, I should say intense, but soft and typically understanding and um, sympathetic eyes harden a bit as they study you for a moment before going soft again and <clears throat> nodding and then turning to return to his temple. Thank you for what you do here. I don't know that anyone ever actually thanks you. People of faith once wronged me very much, and I don't think I'll ever fully trust them. But I've never wished you ill. And I'd have to be blind not to recognize that you provide a great service here. As powerful as faith is to heal and make whole and defend, so can misplaced faith be equal in its destruction and evil. Who do you put your faith in, Nether? Life. Keep listening. Keep thinking. And watch where your faith leads. That's all I'll say. And he turns and starts to walk again. Oh, I'm tired. Those of you who have stayed up the entire it's night. Going to be a nice, quiet morning on the ship. And you hear a <laughs> <laughs> an explosion a of hells. thunderous energy. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, so again, roll. I guess we did. We shall roll for our awards. Um, Mariah, you wake mm. up feeling pretty good despite being really irritated that you know you saw that. They, in fact, almost um, blew out a porthole with that uh, mm -hmm. um, 
thunder wave and damaged. There was no uh, they about it. There was only one person who damaged the ship. That's no, why yeah. I. Uh, that's why team I'm Melvin? Team Serean, and you should be too. <laughs> 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 This advertisement was not paid for. Brian <laughs> has no idea. She didn't endorse this at all. But morning uh. comes to Salt Marsh as the uh, um, Pixie's Fury gently rocks in the morning tide. Mariah, I believe you had something you wanted to do immediately I do. in the morning. Yeah. Um. I will I uh, ask uh Ozprion if he can bring uh Sarayan and Melvin to the deck. Does he consent to do so? Sorry. Prudent. Oh sorry. <laughs> I had someone message me. Uh sure, I'll go get the kids. <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, does Saraya need to roll for exhaustion? Those of you or... who stayed up the whole night, yes, please make a constitution saving throw. I'm going to use my inspiration on this roll. Da -da -da. It rolled Sarayan... twice, but 11. <laughs> 11? Okay. Yeah. And nether? Ooh. Thank goodness for inspiration. I rolled a 16. Okay. Um, you, neither of you take a level of exhaustion, but whew, if you did this again, it would be quite taxing on your system, you feel. It would not be as easy to um, just shrug off the effects of this. Things been well, as taxing on my exhaustion. system. Exhaustion. Peter, um, as I the betrayal of Melvin. So. <laughs> uh, Peter, I apologize Melvin for my did. delayed recognition of this. I already have inspiration. Um, so may I kick that down the line? Sure. Um, Neville well, Melvin. Nether already had one at the point of giving. Oh, well, just no, used well, oh, it. Mm, <laughs> it's uh, true. Uh, uh. You just used it. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Can't <laughs> deny that logic. <laughs> so Melvin. Melvin. I do not have inspiration yet, so I will take okay. that. Okay. Be inspired. That, I'm sure that will come in handy in a moment. <laughs> Can't it be lowest? Be in the natural ones. <laughs> Did you roll your constant? Exhausted um, and heartbroken. Not. Uh, or, but no, she's so, not here, no more. Prion, you come on down. Saran has moved her bunk to the... Um, well, I don't know. Melvin, would you be in the fore or the aft of the ship, do you think? The front or the I, back? I would have been wherever I was put um, and not complained. So, yeah. Most of the younger crew members are in the the quarter deck as the um, more... The, the greener sailors are typically, well, foremast hands, really. That's where they work. It's on the very front of the ship, on the foremast. So, um you would be put up there most likely to start off. So Prion, you go down sort of down under the quarter deck under the front of the boat, go down and find Melvin there just sleeping and absolutely an iron grip around a book that he's, uh, has clung to his chest. I'll uh, heavily tap the trident onto the, uh, the deck. Boom, boom. Hi, hi, Prion. You've been summoned. Someone's going to okay, be walking okay. the plank today. <laughs> and I'll walk off. <laughs> Melvin goes even whiter than normal. And he walks off hiding <laughs> a smile and then walks towards where, uh, all the way to the back of the boat. All that 30 feet. Okay. Hello. You see a pair of heavily iron booted or steel booted feet hanging out of a um, hammock and a see a um, very perturbed coral face staring at the um, at the uh, bulkhead of the ship directly above her. So, Have you been stewing all night? Yes. <laughs> it's Come the on. principle of it. 
He stole from me. The captain wants you. She's going to make and... Melvin walk the plank. Oh, thank God. I can't miss that. <laughs> so serene. Swings her legs out of bed. I'm Clops. joking, but at least you're up. One of you is going to be oh. walking the plank. If it's you, we've obviously got to tie you up. Because it's not, it's not going to be me, especially if it comes down to like fisticuffs. It's going to be me. <laughs> A trial by combat. Yeah, good friggin' <laughs> luck, Melvin. I get my spells. <laughs> uh, um, so you all ascend, or the two of you ascend to the deck and find, um, I imagine Mariah maybe up on the, uh, up on the quarter deck, sort of looming above the deck as the two of you are summoned up. You can see her looking mm -hmm. imperious and like she doesn't like mornings, maybe, um, standing there. All right, you two. Aside from the obvious bullshit of casting a spell below deck, Melvin, Strange. unless we're Strange. AR in imminent danger, never do that again. Sorry, Mariah. <sighs> I've read it the cap I've uh, read it the plane, Captain. I'll give her a Ah, ring. thank you. <laughs> you two need to explain yourselves, because this is clearly getting out of hand, and I can't have the two of you at each other's necks, either as a party or as people who are a part of this crew. Oh, well, it's simple really. I'll go first. <laughs> and Sarayan puts an arm. She I imagine they're standing next to each other and she like Shoulders Melvin out of the way, walks up, stands very straight. <clears throat> As you may know, there was a period of time relatively recently in which I was under the influence of a of a spell by Jolek. And during that time, I may have written some some poetry and drawn some illustrations and um Melvin, who I used to trust as my confidant and friend, broke into my my book, into my book, and we had shared a love of books and a love of taking notes. And this was in the private section of my of my notebook. And he went in and he wrote down everything. And then when I said I just wanted those pages back because they were mine and they were private, he refused to he refused to let them be mine again. And so I I'm very upset and I feel like it was a huge betrayal of everything that we should stand for on this ship as as farers of the sea. And um yeah, so he betrayed my trust. He's not a good crewmate. Make him walk the plank. Okay. Get ready to the plank, Melvin. Melvin, you do get to speak for yourself. Okay. What could you possibly um, say? Well, it at, at the time, uh, Sarian did show me the the poetry in question and said it was okay for me to copy it down, but then I, later I said that. that she didn't want me to But wasn't to I under the influence it. of that spell? I don't know what that means. Like, I, I, I understand being charged. affected by a spell, but like, under the influence? I've never heard that phrase before. I was under the influence? Are you stupid? I was under the influence of a spell. I was charmed. It well, wasn't oh, myself. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that 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 only affected your interactions with the the vampire. I thought. Um, no, I was And wasn't it was a really good insight into level. your your mind and like the way that you think. I thought, which is why I wanted to preserve it, so that if I ever write a book about us in the future, people would understand where you were coming from. I can speak it was for like myself. I don't need you to place. interpret my own inner workings. I'm fully capable of speaking for myself. Okay, so. Both of them walk the plank? You know what? You're Fine. You, so you're a little plank trigger happy. No, 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 no. Okay, no, no. I'm not done with you. I'm just going home. I'm not done with you. Everyone just finds this extremely funny. Serene, Melvin has a point that, to my knowledge, Vampire charms, which are not a spell, 
only affect some portion of behavior. You did say that it was fine. And I think that that comes probably from a place of trust, right? That you shared things with one another. You did consent. However, under different circumstances, you revoked that consent, Melvin. So we should give back the things that one considers private when they are requested of us. However, and I look at Sarayan, violence or threat of violence towards a friend and crewmate will not be tolerated. It's not my friend anymore. Is. We're not friends. Well, then maybe Melvin can work on re-earning that trust. I doubt it. But you also need to work on re-earning his trust. What did I do to break his trust? Threat of violence and forcibly removing something that is critical to his person. Both of you kind of fucked up here, okay? But he Melvin and first. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many times one fucks up or who fucks up first. If you fucked up, you fucked up. Fine. Can I have my page back, please? Well, Captain. Uh, Melvin. Well, you, you see, the, the poems are interspersed with a bunch of notes and also some spells that I've written into the book. Um, but, but I can erase them. Um, I showed you that trick with the, and I produced the quill, and I like bend down and write on the deck of the ship, um, just my name, and then I wipe over it with the, with the quill, and the ink disappears off of the the deck of the ship again. So, so I could just uh, remove the the poetry from the book if you'd like. I'd really rather yes, not waste paper. Yes, that's apparently the only thing that you can do to remedy the situation. Let's get it out then, Melvin. Okay. Um, then Melvin will open the book in such a way that it is visible to everyone else who's watching um, and flip through such to his section poem. on Serene. Um, and then wipe over the poems with his quill to erase them. Are you sure you want to delete it? It's such a beautiful poem. I have it for myself, and that's where it's going to stay. Melvin, do you have any other copies? Um, n no. Liar! He's lying! I'll roll deception. <laughs> Can I roll insight? <laughs> and I'm going to do it at advantage I will with also that inspiration. I'm also going to roll my insight with advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Because no, I have my D20 no from last metal. time. Oh, <laughs> Got a 13 on that. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll a regular insight. <clears throat> I don't need to. Oh. I know he's bullshitting straight away. <laughs> All right, I rolled a 19. And then a 4. I'm obviously taking the 19. <laughs> Melvin. Remember, Melvin. I've got the plank ready. Um, well, uh, you're, you're welcome to look through my notes and the, the, the spare paper that I have. I would love for you to tell me where the totally not existent copy of Melvin, of Sarayan's poetry is. Well, I also, for what it's of... worth, it's a dirty 20 with my modifier. <laughs> well, well, I, I kind of memorized it, so I have a copy up here. You know what? I'm sick of this. I'm sick of you. I'm, I'm, I'm done. And Sarayan turns and leaves the room. The, the deck? <laughs> yeah. She you jumps turn around off the and, side uh, of the ship. Um, <laughs> you turn around and there's a dwarf, dwarf there that you recognize. And he says, I don't believe the captain dismissed you there. I understand you're an officer, but there's a pecking order to be respected. Sarayan, knowing that because she loves order, cannot argue with this. <laughs> and so she rolls her eyes, sits down cross-legged on the deck, folds her arms. Can I go, please? 
Captain, I've been working all morning to find my cat and nine tails, but I can't quite find it. Would you like me to keep looking? Uh, I mean, let the search go on, but I don't think we necessarily need it in this case. Melvin, uh, oh. you haven't answered my question. Wow, dwarf, really? Well, I may have made another copy of it because mm-hmm. I figured you'd make me erase it. And mm-hmm. I, I, I really liked the poetry. I thought it was really pretty. Um, let me get get it out here and I'll pull my backpack off and go through it and pull out a piece of paper and hand it over to you. Yet another deception. And you'll see that it is a very mundane list of creatures that we saw on our trip into the swamp. I assume you magicked this. Yeah. Okay. It's... I, I'm the only one who can read the poetry and that everyone else will see it that way. Okay. Anyone got a light? It just it, it'll daytime. only last for ten days. Um even if you leave it. Oh well. I will crumple it into a ball and walk to the side of the ship and say we will let the sea reclaim it then and I drop it in. As you're doing that, you see Nether coming up the gangplank, and she's got two long dowel rods, and a delicious smell is coming from them as they have um, pretzels, just pretzel after pretzel after pretzel after pretzel after pretzel, (laughs) and she comes up and she says, Good morning, everyone. The bakery was just (laughs) making these. I've got some that are sprinkled with cheese and some that are sprinkled with cinnamon. Um, Cinnamon. What the hell is going on? Oh. Too sweet for Melvin because he's wretched. We're making Melvin and Serene walk the plank. I'm not going to make sounds, anyone walk the plank. Sounds However, like people could use a pretzel. <laughs> I think everyone Serene, could use They're a very pretzel. hot. Please get them off me, please. Lifts. <laughs> Serene, you know, runs over, grabs one with cheese, and sits down again. Petulant. <laughs> Begins as petulantly as one can to consume the pretzel. Consider the. One. <laughs> I consider the immediate matter of who has the poetry and who's not supposed to have the poetry resolved. What? Take. St- what? <laughs> 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 what happened here last night? <laughs> uh, Melvin is a sneak and a snake and is not to be trusted. Trump. Violent verse. That's what happened. Um, I, I'm not the one who snuck into someone else's bunk and tried to steal their spell book. Okay. My, no the... choice. You literally... Okay. The two you of you are going to take some time to cool Melvin. the fuck off. Okay? Okay. If some bullshit arises and we all have to go fight something that wants to kill us, because that happens fairly regularly, put aside your differences. Don't let that get in the way of the fight. If we're not fighting anything, just go spend time on opposite sides of the ship, cool down, have a drink, eat a pretzel. pretzel. (laughs) Thank you. Where's the claw wine? Oh, I've got some in my bunk. It's a little early for drinking, don't you think, Sarian? It's not a little early. I have some, please. We. I'll come with you. Dismissed. Captain, are, are, are we setting say, say okay? <laughs> As you were, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> dwarf kind of saw it, the dwarf sighs and sort of walks across the deck, and the sailors resume their um, work on the deck. Pretty we're gonna walk the plank. Working hard, I'm hardly working. <laughs> I'll, I'll go fishing under the sea. I, as uh, I'm heading back down towards the captain's cabin, I'm going to stop by another and I'm put a hand on her shoulder and say, I need a fucking break. <laughs> I'm gonna Wait, take a break. can I have some, some claw wine or not? Hold on. Just to try not to drink too much before noon. Sure. Okay. Yeah. The pretzels. I'm not really mad at you. 
That's what, oh, no. that's a really tasty. That's what never becomes the adult, and Sarayan becomes the child. That's uh, Rayan's that's always you, been the child. One of the benefits <laughs> of being up really early in the morning. Where is Mina right now, by the way? She is downstairs in her room drinking. Oh my god. <laughs> what a horrible drink precedent I've set. <laughs> Good morning, I guess. Uh, is there anybody oh. on this boat who's not a drunk? <laughs> Me. The dwarf just looked at you and says, Not to my knowledge. <laughs> um, I do believe we're going to be making sail, if not today, then tomorrow. Um, so make sure all the crew are back. Um, make sure everyone's reasonably sober. Make sure all proper paperwork is done and ship is supplied, that sort of thing. Aye, aye. Um, how many days of rations are we going to be needing? Do I know how far away Port Lucerne is? I don't think you guys have really discussed the ex the, the, the full extent of that um, voyage yet. Um, which is how I many can the ship would... hold? I mean, you could stock up for um, almost a year's worth of rations oh, if you wanted Lord. to. Um, yeah. uh, I mean, if you're talking just about quickly, really like ration rations. Because um, it happened know, for... 11 minutes ago. A massive thank you to Fable42 who raided with a party of 11. Oh. Sorry, guys, I've literally just seen it. So, and obviously we were. Oh, no, no, that's awesome. We were in it some was, role it was so Thank you very much. A interrogation going on on the um, deck of the ship so welcome fablers good to have you with us things have been tense here <laughs> well and so so nether sort of leans over to um dragon and says how far away is port lucerne to who sorry to to the dwarf how far away is port lucerne port lucerne um Uh, I've heard that one can take up, voyage can take up words of two weeks. A month and a half's if... worth of rations, then. Right, then. Okay. Um, so that'll be, f let's see, five silver pieces is a day's worth of rations. Um for i'm assuming all of you so the seven of you so 37 divided by two let's go with a even uh uh 18 yeah and then times however many days for our gold pieces sounds like about 25 gold pieces worth i could always fish as well how many, how long did you say, Sean? How many days? A month um, and a half? A month and a half. So about 45 times 18. That's what oh, I'm hearing. 45 times 18. That's a lot more than 810. 25. 810. Silver or gold? So it's 30 crew plus the seven of you. That's, that's um, five silver pieces for. This is probably the easier way to do it. So 37, um, and I divided that in half. Maybe in I half. did a bad thing by doing that. That didn't make sense. Um, yeah, never mind. Okay. So <laughs> that let's just is do hard. This way. Could someone please do 37 times uh, uh, times five? 185. 8,325. That and then many, move the decimal point over one. Eight hundred right? thirty-two gold pieces. So, how many? Eight thirty-two gold pieces. Okay. So did I do it right by accident? Yeah, you did. Okay, cool. It's <laughs> a lot more than twenty-five gold. Math. <laughs> what's that? What's that for? Are we we in space? Rations. Literally just rations. Yeah. Wow. That's food for the entire food and water for the entire crew for a month um, and a half. Um, can we cut that down a bit by me? fishing because that's obviously my trade yeah potentially um i can also make eight gallons of fresh water a day with the alchemy jug are you gonna really be using it to make water i can 
<laughs> do all of them to like I, I can use each of the thingies, can't I? Well, I thought it was a I random thought, thing. I'm pretty sure roll. the alchemy jug is you pick one and it can only produce that for the day. Yeah. Oh, my bad. I thought it was random. Yeah, well, if we need roll. it. Well, here's the other thing. Logically, if you have an alchemy jug and you're Mariah, do you, do you <laughs> wow, pack, call water, out. pack water and make sure you can have gallons of alcohol or do you <laughs> risk the, risk running out of alcohol and use the alchemy jug for water? You so. don't I'm gonna risk running out of alcohol. Uh, oh, apparently Talise has create food and water every day. Um, I'm going to flip for that, though. And l oh. what, what do you think, Peter, if... Uh, if Jade is successful at fishing. We, we knock off a hundred gold. That seems. Excuse me. That seems. Um, I'm going to go fishing for a big tuna. Reasonable. And if Talise is mm -hmm. going to every create day use create food and water for another fifteen. Um, mm -hmm. Let's uh, 15, so let's take off another uh, uh, three, uh, maybe another three from that. So, And I flipped for the Kraken, which in my uh, determination was going to be being more reasonable instead of um, submitting to my... Uh, uh, alcoholic tendencies. My, my alcoholic tendencies, so... Look at that. Yes. Wow. Um, Learning. So <laughs> we subtracted 100... Yeah, from... 100 for fishing, and you said 300 for create food and water? Yes. All right, so now we're down to uh, 400 and... 25. Uh, 25. How much, how much of a discount for my, uh, my careful consideration? <laughs> it's just not going to increase because you're not oh, okay. buying grog. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, should we take that out of party loot? Uh, yeah, I can... Uh... Grab that. Cool. But you have to add another 800 because my familiar is a, a seagull and you know how greedy they are. <laughs> <laughs> it's every big food. All right. Blocks um, of them just stealing food <laughs> right out of the sailor's hands. Rude. Yeah, but and is, is it time to go? Do we have anything else in town that needs to be done? What are we meant to be yeah. doing? What's next? We're going to Port of Lucene. We're going to investigate more of the Thalassic League in Port Lucene. Yeah. Yeah, we could we can make a heading and head out and let various individuals stew and uh, think upon their actions uh, during the voyage, possibly. Some of us have more thinking to do than others. I'm good yeah, some of us do. Well, did anyone hear that? It, I didn't hear anything. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know if that's what it's like for the next, uh, you know, week or so, but the next 10 day or so, um, it is open ocean. And not Very much certainly happening. is. 10 um, days, you say, yeah? Uh, Elvin's getting a silent treatment. About. Let me, I'm going to roll some D100 dice here. Yes, because I need to know. What? Well, because okay. I've got to mark the time off. Yeah. All right. Of my trident. Uh, oops. This isn't right. Oh my god, Pixie. <laughs> what Pixie do? <laughs> Tell me. She puts she, the she... substance in substance abuse. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, okay. That's uh, so seven days go by, oh, here's... and the seas begin to become a bit rocky. Rocky? I guess um, there's not rocky, but uh, that would be a road would get rocky. But they get to be <laughs> a little rough. Choppy? Um, choppy. Choppy. Yes, that's that's the right Ooh. word for it. Um, Quite so, in fact. And the sky begins to be... A little bit more overcast you call all hands on deck and you can see that you are now in the midst of a gathering storm all right. um 
about an hour into this, the ship heaving back and forth, um, certain sailors just hanging onto the gunnels and uh, those managing the sails, you can see a couple near slips where their feet slip off ropes, but it's a trained crew. It's a good crew. Um, they all manage to keep their footing and uh, hold on, managing the sail properly in order to sail through this. And then you hear um, um, a voice call out from all the way up the top of the mainmast, and you hear a Captain! Look ahead at 25 degrees! Something Looking. up there! Take a look. And as, as you look, um, you can see something rising out of the waves. And at this time, all of you begin to hear a sound echoing across the waves as well. The waves are already churning and full of foam and such, but there are these occasional vibrations that go out, causing these strange ripples like sound waves um, dancing across the surface, even of these churning um, uh, white caps. And as you look a bit, um, this is six days in, Jade. Um, as you look in that direction, you can see what look to be maybe three pillars standing. And then you hear what sound like voices, maybe discordant voices sounding. Um, the wind and the direction of the waves say you should head straight towards those to keep, uh, um, you know, keep um, against going directly against some of the flow. Um, this is the safest course. And as they, three pillars draw near, you see they are not pillars at all. A trio of enormous humanoids stand floating just above the surface of the water, their arms raised, lightning cascading wildly around them as they begin to chant towards the sky. They are gray-skinned with salty white hair blowing wildly in this fierce wind, and each wear armor made of dark metallic scales. Their voices, though in harmony with each other, echo with such power it hurts to listen. The clouds begin to grow ever darker above you. The wind begins to swirl, pitching the fury, pitching the fury recklessly side to side as you see this magic ritual taking place right in front of you. Can I cast Armor of Agathus? You may. I'd, I'd like to cast Mage Armor. <clears throat> okay. That's and me. you hear this... Just echoing up into the sky as this storm is growing in fury. We got any knowledge of what this is? Um, what is it that you are trying to um, identify specifically? Um, there does seem to be some sort of magic happening here. Creatures. These creatures are huge humanoids. Um, but uh, giants? Giants would probably fit the description, yes. So what okay. are you trying to identify, Jade? Uh, what kind of giant they are. Okay, yeah, 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 go ahead. If I know much about them. Can I Can I also... What would that be? Survival? Try to figure that out. Sure. Um, uh, well, let's... Uh, yeah. So as you're looking at them, um, I guess I would allow... Almost history, religion, or arcana would probably be, all be appropriate for... What about nature? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, you know... Lots of knowledge let's things. Let's see what everybody mm -hmm. else rolls. Um, I have a 24 on arcana. I'll throw I'll throw in for a history check. That big pay to to look at the um Woof. <laughs> um it, it, this is a check regarding what's going on or the giants themselves. I think Melvin's going for what are they doing and Priyan and I are okay. who are they? Cool. Definitely um well, 4 and 10. Definitely giants. Um they seem to be humanoid, but with that uh you're yeah. not quite sure so um, whether or not they are friendly it's uh, hard to say but uh, and Melvin as you are looking you can see that the clouds are reacting to their music in an unnatural way 
and they are casting control weather as a rich uh, ritually casting it together is oh, sailing wow. around them a possibility it is um the but you are kind of in the center of this storm at the moment and it is um, growing in intensity as they are ritually casting this spell is there they're calling the storm are they, are they attacking us or are they just doing it for fun uh good question uh, i feel like it's got to be for fun do they appear to be like looking at us and like trying no, to draw us They do not closer? appear to be aware of you. They are looking up and they are in the midst, Melvin, you can tell of casting this spell as this enormous storm is forming overhead. How far away are they? You are on a bearing towards them. They are probably um, 200 feet now as the uh, Pixie's Fury begins to close in that direction. Um, as Melvin, I said, just do you to know? make sure with that high Arcana roll, they have not completed casting the spell yet. Mm -hmm. And this storm is beginning to rage and batter the Fury. I, uh, Melvin, do you have a sense of how long it's going to take them to finish that? The, um, it seems like maybe a minute. 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Okay. How does counter spell interact with ritual casting we know that so i misspoke when i said it's ritual casting melvin would know that um this is actually a spell that they it just takes 10 minutes to cast oh okay and so this storm is here they are casting control weather oh. um and it seems to be control weather to cause a storm or to intensify it you don't know that hmm we All right, after. well, if we get close enough, I can maybe get rid of it, but we'll probably also then engage them in combat because they're probably we, not going to look too kindly on that. We also have ballista that have a longer range. Do we think that they're enemies? Or, I mean, they may be friendly. Friendly doesn't really matter when the storm tears your ship apart. Well, they're, they're casting control weather. I, I don't know whether it's to summon the storm or not. It seems like the storm's getting worse, though. It's bad. Uh... After the first minute, as you discuss, you hear <laughs> creaking in the hall, and you hear shouting from below as the repair crews um, uh, uh start to work on a one of the hull boards which is bent in and begun to leak a bit. The hull takes three points of bludgeoning damage in the All first right. minute. Um, the moment we're close enough, I'm going to uh, counterspell this. Are we attacking them, Maria? I, I'm not... If they attack us, we attack back, but I'm just trying to take care of the ship right now, all right? Okay. So, I'm gonna... Whoa, that was weird. Um, sorry, the <coughs> green changed on me all of a sudden. Um, it was Sean. We lost Sean. Oh, that's why. Mr. Anderson. <laughs> oh, did you see the new, uh... Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really like the Matrix, guys. I do as well. Love the Matrix. I'm sure he will be back momentarily. It shouldn't be too uh, long. Apologies for the cameras, guys. I was just waiting for Sean to yeah. pop back in. If you're not in the giveaway yet, exclamation mark, giveaway to enter. It's for $25 and also a $5 gift card because we completed the, uh, the crack and hype train earlier as well. So, um, Cool. Da -da -da, there we go. Oh, just get just Peter's camera. Okay. Just as we're chatting here, then you can kick me out. Um, we'll wait just a couple minutes. So, um, yeah. um, d well, while we're getting starting to get closer, um, yeah. I'll ask Mariah again. Well, I, I can fireball them from further away than you can counterspell. Um, so if we're at, we are going to attack them, we may as well open big. There's probably some wisdom to that. Um, alternatively, if they don't see the counter as a threat, then we engage in a combat for nothing? I don't know. 
Sarayan, do you know anything about these creatures? Being from the sea. Well, you don't have to say it like that. Um, let me... I don't know. Um, can I make a history check? Uh, you... What kind of check were you looking to make? History, just to see if I know anything about these sure. creatures. Sure. You're here. We want to know what they are. Because I am proficient. Proficient, uh, yum. Oh, damn it. I rolled a 10. Yeah, you've heard of the many types of um, giants before. You've known them to be highly Giant. destructive. Listen, every time we've assumed something was not a threat before attacking, it's come up back to bite us. I say we do what we can to protect the ship and try to get through it as quickly as possible. So are you in favor of the fireball or not in favor of the fireball? Um, Preemptive strike is what Melvin is suggesting. Uh, whatever it's going to be, it needs to be now. I'm in favor of it. All right, Protect this ship. go for it, Melvin. And I'm, I'm going to uh, get myself ready to... Um, Counterspell, but I, I will wait for Melvin to act first. DM, do I know anything about giants? Uh, you can also make a history check. Thank you. Yeah, why don't you look in your notebook, Melvin? I've got a 12. 12. Not, uh, not a super historic, not an historic group today. Um, yeah. So, same. Um, there are good giants, there are bad giants, sort of, but oftentimes when they have it's hard to say most of the stories that are written about giants interfering with um, small folk it is uh, usually not good from, I, I don't know anything about sort of weaknesses or anything like that uh, you know that, that they're role? tied to the elements um, so these clearly are not uh, like a fire giant or something so you would have no reason to believe that these would in particular would be um immune or resistant or anything like that so go vanilla deal vanilla damage um so there's another okay. uh one point of bludgeoning damage for the next minute as you guys continue okay. to close as soon as we get within 150 feet melvin will cast a fireball um at the giants hoping to catch okay. all three but i don't know how far apart they are third level did I believe? Yeah. Yes. Did somebody good. did somebody take eight hit points off of me? No. Okay. Uh, Twenty-seven points of fire damage. DC fifteen dexterity save. Okay. Dexterity saves. Um. Interestingly, they all make it. Um. And so twenty-seven points of fire damage makes them. You cast a spell, though, aren't you? What's that? Clutching the straws, just thinking how they dodge the fireball while they're casting the spell. It's a little weird. Yeah. <clears throat> it's all good. Um. But uh, interestingly enough, um, there is a uh, they <laughs> rolled eighteen, twenty, and eighteen on their dexterity saves, which they're not very good at. Um, also and then I have concentration a, checks, right? For uh, asking. Yeah. And then I have a 15 on one, and then I rolled two natural ones after that for 11 and 11. Nice. As uh, two of them um, uh, uh, let's well, see. If they, if they saved on the dex saves, even an 11 is going to save on a concentration check. Not uh, one is a not one, though. That's a good point. That's it's a good a, point. It's a save. It's not it's a... a save. Um, exactly. I was thinking uh, I was thinking they uh, failed. So Okay, so they all take the half. Um, what you hear then a voice uh, break from the, um, the chanting and say, Burar, stir in tvorvek! Which just echoes across the um, waters. Does anyone speak giant? No. But I shout back, stop being a jerk! And the it, the uh, chanting then resumes. 
And you'd you hear that. Sort of we'd have learned our lesson from the last game when nobody spoke giant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we made such a good friend that day. <laughs> Oog. And um, after that, let's see, as you close, we will have another three points of damage as the so hole continues to be crushed a bit. So. Okay, so they're they're still casting then. They are. Okay, then when we come into 60 feet of range, I will um, cast Counterspell and I start listening for the tune of their chant and I want to try to disrupt it with my own. Oh, very cool. Okay, um, so you reach out that sort of disruptive magic to try to um, counter uh, counter the spell. Um, this is incredibly powerful magic. Please roll it's a caster level magic. check. I will do so with my inspiration. Ah. Inspiration. Um, now, let's see. Um, this is a caster level check, and my understanding is that I get to add uh, uh, I can't Half remember what it's called. Half proficiency to it Jack as well. Um, so that's just a charisma check, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So plus one to whatever I roll. 22. And uh, one, you see that as it is singing it, <laughs> um, the song is disrupted and it wheels about towards the ship and says again, do that, do camera, do her, and sinks down into the surf as the others begin to chant and the waves grow even stronger and begin to continue crashing against the ship with even fiercer um, strength. And the ship takes 14 points of bludgeoning damage on the hull. Guess I'm gonna go again. Another one looks around and s looks at you guys. Uh, to Hurrah! Okay. Um, can, can I, can I make an insight check to try to figure out, sort of, the urgency with which they're trying to communicate? Sure. Even though I don't understand giant. Um, can I cast comprehend like languages? Full crew here. Ooh, I, have, I have a dirty. You have 20. comprehend languages. Yep. Jesus. Okay, Melvin, you see a little bit of panic um, uh, in in their eyes or just maybe, maybe not panic. It's definitely a panic. It's, um, it is pity and frustration. <laughs> um, Mariah, I'm, I wonder if they're trying to help. They don't seem angry at us. They just seem worried. I'll cast Comprehend Languages. Okay, mm. and they continue to sing their song, um, which is all, our, it, you can tell it comes from the giant language, but it's definitely um, a spell component. So it sounds kind of like gobbledygook. And then, um, and so that's what they continue to do at the moment. Okay. Um, you, uh, who has, you have pressed the digitation. Can you um, yeah. make your, just shout out to them? Like, uh, Prestidigitation boomy. doesn't make boom? my voice louder. What's what the one that makes your voice boomy? That's thaumaturgy. What, Ask what them what the want... fuck is going on. What do you want to say? I got it. And I send um, Doll trying to fly up to, um, to the ear of one of the uh, uh, giants. Okay. Um, the winds are fierce. Um, it's an easy thing. Have Doll make a strength check to try to... Strength <laughs> check? Strength 60 check. mile an hour winds. <laughs> Bye, doll. <laughs> um, well, let's see. You know what? You could always roll, right? Right. Yeah. Doll goes flying up. Athletics. <laughs> that makes a difference. Negative four on the roll. And the roll is a two. Two. So this time, <laughs> Doll is just going, just 
hanging out in the wind and not able to go against this wind is now as this storm has really conjured is going about it's actually about 60 mile an hour sustained winds um by now the crew has be- has started to furl many of the sails just to keep the pixie's fury from completely keeling over how yeah. close are we to the giants now at this point um, you are within 60 feet. You're passing probably about 30 feet past them now. Um, the storm okay. is loud, but... How tall um, are they? They are 15 feet tall, I believe. Mariah, do you want to get up to one of them to talk? Um, Comprehend language. I was going to... understand it. That's not you speak it. I'm just going to boop on up there. Unless anyone else has a better idea. I, I can make you fly. That might be a bad idea. I don't want to turn into doll. <laughs> That's fair. Um, as we get up a little closer, um, barring anyone else coming with, up with a better idea before we do this, I'm going to kind of try to position. I'm actually going to um, climb up uh, onto some um, surfaces a little higher onto the, the back. As oh, Mariah is doing that, I'd like to, to ritually cast as a single action water breathing. Because um, <laughs> I had, had not done that this morning. I, I might have a way of getting use up my there one that use. does not involve climbing. That's um. Right. Well, so I'm going to get myself a little higher, and then I will misty step to its shoulder. Wow. <laughs> wow, she's fucked. The hole takes <laughs> another eight points. And the hole takes another eight points of damage as Mariah <laughs> disappears. <laughs> um, and you. Uh, oh, there goes the captain. <laughs> And suddenly, the I'm captain head, now. No, you're not. I'm the captain size now. Of your entire body turns, and you are precariously standing upon um, a slippery pauldron made of um, rain-soaked, uh, basically steel uh, scale mail. Um, okay. To stay find a grip. on. Uh, find a grip. <laughs> you, you find a grip. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So you reach out, uh, make an uh, make an acrobatics check. Sweet lord! Come on! Oh, I, I swear I clicked it. Where'd it go? Don't be bad. Don't be bad. Uh, did it not go through? It didn't go through. Okay. Oh, I'm having Ooh. heart palpitations. Yes. <gasps> Natural twenty. Nice. So you reach out and you realize you are so dangerously close to grabbing this giant's beard to hang (laughs) on for dear life but you think better of it in the moment and reach down and uh, find your feet secure your boots properly waxed for a slippery ship's deck and then you reach your hand under the pauldron and just grab on and find a um, secure handhold and you are you feel secure mounted on this shoulder all right. Then I'm going to cast tongues. And I'm going to shout into its ear, "What are you doing?" Um and uh um you hear it say, "Fools, why do you interfere? A dozen ships will drown in this maelstrom." As it um continues then to cast um go tighten your rope see to your crew it will calm okay <laughs> awesome pat him, him on the shoulder sorry about the fireball <laughs> sorry as you were and I, I will misty step back to the ship <laughs> <laughs> And uh, <laughs> this is just for fun. Make another uh, acrobatics check. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you you missed a step back to where the ship was. Yeah. Nineteen. <laughs> you land on your feet with with and you strike a pose on the helm. Uh, it looks very cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> right as the and, lightning flashes, just <laughs> and then she's there. <laughs> And you hear another crunch as the hell, hell as the hull takes twelve more points of damage. You're out there, Liz. A little bit. Oh no, she's all pink. Pink. <laughs> um, 
I will give orders to uh, just brace the ship as best as we can and power through past this area. Okay. There are giants in the sea. There are big total giants. I literally in the kept sea. thinking, there are giants in the sky. <laughs> that song is so pretty. I love that. So pretty. Um, so I showed you what this is, kind of what they look like, or at least the one um, upon whose shoulder Ooh, Mariah stood. Super uh, cool. Yeah, and so a few more moments of this, the hull having taken that damage, um, you see this <laughs> magic begin to cascade across the sky. And um, the clouds start to part in almost geometric runic patterns, but the storm still um, uh, is um, um, uh, excuse me, sorry, the storm is still in effect, but it seems to start to dissipate a bit, and the two giants then turn um, to the ship and as one enormous tidal wave comes by, you see an enormous hand reach out mm, and steady the ship for a bit. A giant's hand holding it, keeping you from capsizing. And then mm, it rocks back and you hear this voice echo, rattling the lanterns, any piece of glass and every piece of wood and rope seem to vibrate with its voice as it says, Strength of the sea do outweigh the storm. Um, and it seems to be, although it doesn't translate super well, you uh, feel it as a basically saying good luck, and it <laughs> sinks down into the sea. Now, the storm is dissipating as they have completed their casting of um, control weather. Without one of them, being able to finish it and um, with yes. a slight delay we will be adding a few necessary skill checks to no this um, to this skill challenge we're going to be do it again I very much say skill challenge this is where um, the result of this these previous actions have determined what the rubric for this is going to be so now we nice. will need um uh, sorry, what do we have? Six successes before three failures. If you fail okay. three skill checks, you will fail the skill challenge. And um, may we use spells you. in lieu of skills? Pardon? May we use spells in lieu of skills? You may, and here is the, uh, oh, sorry, we have seven and three. You can use a spell, but you will still need to, um, we will still need to roll a um, caster level check in order to use those. Also, um, and this is a, a bit of a new thing, but I'm trying it out. You can only use a skill by which you are proficient. And once you have used said skill, you can not use it again in a future check. Mm -hmm. In the so, um, yeah. before we jump into that, Peter, uh, we have 500 bits from Pixie in the chat. Yeah. My goodness, this would be a good time to um, to hand Thank all of those Thank you very much, out, Pixie. Probably. Thanks, Pixie. Thank you, Pixie. Thank you. You're the best. Pixie's bounty. Not oh. Oh. All right. oh, M crew here, Mariah and Melvin. Um, which of you golden arches are going to take that uh, D6? Roll off. Let's see. Do you, okay. Roll off. All right. Go ahead and each roll a d20. I rolled a five. I have a 13 on the okay. Kraken. So. Melvin, you have a d6 inspiration to d20. go. All right, so. D20 inspiration? D20, mm -hmm. yeah. D20, excuse me. Hi. And things start to go very wrong. So the first thing happens is on the main sail, the sail that is indeed keeping your ship traveling in the right direction, that is, um, keeping you going to get out of this storm and aligning you properly with the waves. Two of the stays, the ropes that are really holding the um, edges of the sails to the deck of the ship break loose and the ship goes, uh, and the, or, excuse me, the sail starts to flap wildly in the wind. 
There's a loose Captain. rope the flapping that obviously will need to be fixed before um, um, the ship can safely move. Who would like to jump I rush to do that. Okay. How would you like to do so? Two obvious ways. A, Survival. Um, a, uh, okay. What? Survival. Oh, survival. I thought you said Whoa. fireball. <laughs> that works. Survival. Not this this will take care of the problem. Yeah. Boom. How, how, how would us, could you, just, could you please gone. describe how survival would help you um, to snatch these ropes down and tie them back? Um, um, well, I would I'm think not like survival is just... all to do with like obviously surviving, it, obviously out in the wild and stuff. So tying knots, um, <laughs> like netting, anything to do with like that sort of stuff. Sure, I, would I could see it Freon too where knows you've been in storms before I and you've, you've seen a flailing rope before and can kind of um, predict the pattern. And once you have them in your hands, doop, you can easily tie a knot as you're quite experienced in that. Go ahead and roll survival. But pick me up just to roll a natural one. Oh, ten. Ten, unfortunately, is a failure. God no. Damage. Has one failure, zero successes. Now, um, as the storm continues to go on, um, you see a, you hear a snap, 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 and some of the cargo that had been tied loose and some of the netting begins to slide across the deck. Yourselves and a number of sailors stand in a perilous path between this heavy cargo as it's about to slide across the deck. Anyone can jump in here to try to um, solve this with one of your skills. It's okay if you want to take a second. Everyone can just look at the, the full list of skills of something you're proficient in. You feel inspired, or that makes sense is how you I'll want to jump it. in. I can't do nothing so. now, yeah? I'm... Uh, we have to go to someone else yeah. first. Maybe Sarayan um, can yeah. athletics. Yeah. That's what I was going to do. Is it the um, idea is to keep the cargo from falling or keep the people from dying? I think the people from dying would be Sarayan's first concern. Okay, that's up to you. So you could either um, try to run and shove the cargo back into its place, or you could try to um, grab uh, the people out of the way. Um, what would, Two birds, what one would Saran do? So, Saran um, is going to see, because I mean, she is young and she's impetuous. <laughs> so she immediately sees people in trouble and so the first thing that she would think to do would be to try to get the people away from the immediate danger okay so she's gonna head for the folks on the ship gotcha so you run towards them and uh please make an athletics check to try to yank them both out of the way okay i got an 18 18, 18. Nice. so you um walk up there is a a dwarf and a, a human woman who are um hauling at one of the stay sails to try and um control the control the wind and you see the um heavy crate coming and just grab both of them sort of by the belt their center of gravity and just one with each arm just make a mighty pull and pull them both out of the way as this enormous crate slides across the deck breaks through the side of the um gunnel and crashes down into the water slight damage to the ship mostly cosmetic and a safety rail but you know not actual structural damage and Grog. they are um completely safe until osha arrives cool. <laughs> Get out of the way! Serene runs. And... Did you say it until Osha arrives? Yeah. Now, that is a success from Serene. And suddenly, um, you guys can now see, you hear yelling from up on the um, yard arms, way, way above the ship. Um, and you see, it's hard to make out the um, talk, but you can see sailors pointing ahead of the ship. There are jagged rocks in front near the path that the ship is on a course for um but the wind is swirling this is a difficult um maneuver uh either to thread or to predict or to chart a course around these rocks in the midst of this storm so hmm. it sounds like you're saying it's a water vehicles check it could be that's, I mean, this is open to your creativity absolutely as well, um, if you have another mm. idea. I'm just letting you know the ship is on a path 
uh, in a difficult to navigate uh, area through and it's heading right towards some jagged rocks you could potentially go through them or try to get around them or do something how else. do you how how would a um perception check to guide someone steering the ship be that's great okay i will attempt that <sighs> 18 <laughs> 18's good. That's a success. You have two successes right. to one failure. Okay. And uh, you have Dargan at the wheel, the dwarf, who is sturdy-footed as ever. You know, he can barely see above the actual helm, and each time one of the... I don't know the... where we're going! <laughs> we're getting there each quickly! Time one of the actual... Shall I describe it to you? <laughs> each time one of the actual <laughs> handles goes by, it kind of, like, goes in front of his face. You know, he just sees over the wheel, but he is a um, sturdy-footed sailor. He is no greenhorn, and... Um, cuts a perfect path that you described through the rocks. To build a periscope for him right there. <laughs> there you go. Um, a couple more things start to happen as this, as the um, jagged rocks come by. They are frightening looking. Like the fingers of some uh, you know, cruel sea goddess reaching up to try to pull the ship down, especially in the flashing lightning. It is absolutely terrifying and it's not immediately evident to all of you that you're going to just pass through the other side of just a few of these and a couple of the crew especially start to panic sort of looking around and what to do you can tell that even some of the experienced sailors are starting to lose their nerves at this moment and um nether claps her hands and casts calm emotions on the crew cool so this will be a caster check or a spell attack. What do you want? Or um, save DC. How do you go save? ahead and use spell attack. I, you can use your proficiency bonus. Okay. Come on. Uh, so this is going to be a d20. 12 plus 4, 16. That is a success. And nice. you see, as a... Um, uh, a couple of them turn out, aye, aye, nether, and start to run back towards their posts. And um, it's debris. Without... <laughs> nether died. <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> Stick call. You anyway. barely be heard in the storm. <laughs> nether died. <laughs> cool. All right. So that is three. Did I lose count? Is that three or is that four? Yeah. That's, That's three. 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 Great. We're getting there. Um. So again now, um, a, another physical challenge, you see the end of one of the yard arm snaps and one of the uh, long wooden poles that has been furled. So there isn't a sail immediately um, down across it yet, but it's just a furled up sail on a long wooden pole. It snaps and the end of the pole starts to swing down across the deck. You see a number, again, some of yourselves and the sailors are in the clear path of it. Um could could I cast a fireball using ice element to try to freeze it in place? Creative. Creative. Absolutely. That's ab, that sounds great. All right. I'll mark that off. And you want a you the spell attack roll? Thirty-two points of damage to this ship. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> we think. <laughs> um, you wanted a spell attack roll, yes? Yes. All right. I have a natural 17 plus 7 is like 24. Four. That'll do it. And you see um, a couple of the sailors point up and I, uh, huh, as all of a sudden it just a huge ice ball um, sits there and freezes it to the mast. Um, a couple sailors climb up the shrouds, which are sort of the rope ladders on either side of the mast, and start to tie it in place. So as soon as this water inevitably melts, it won't continue its path of death across the deck. Um, yes. All right. Five successes. We need one more. I thought mm. you said um, seven. seven. Sorry, what? We need seven. Oh, good. You, you, you need two seven, more. so it's two more. Very good. You guys are almost there. Now, a number of the um, crew are now, you can see them ah, 
talking or looking around. One you can see has clearly broken his hand um, as something has happened. It looks crushed, a couple of the fingers almost a little bit mangled. Another looks to have dislocated his shoulder, hauling on one of the lines. Minor injuries, but still they're just barely out of work. Um, some of them are crying out for the ship's <laughs> surgeon, um, asking for help work. with these types of things. Go, um, Nene, go. Blast. Go, Nene, go. <laughs> Triage, just poof. They're looking around, uh, looking for someone to help them. Uh, this would be a good one for Anaris. Can anybody find her? I was about to say, with all of the uh, stuff going on and the ship capsizing and floating around and explosions and screams, as drunk as she is, she probably would come up topside and want to know what in the absolute words will probably get us banned on Twitch would say. I just... <laughs> they haven't banned us for... Have you Elena? been drinking for seven days? Oh yeah, they haven't banned me yet. I swear so much. It's fine. <laughs> it's also <laughs> hilarious that people on days? Twitch for swearing. Yeah, it's it's also hilarious that Inaris would just be like there would be giants like yelling and reverberating through the entirety of the hall, and she's just like, <laughs> um, taking on water, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, you come up and you see a couple injured sailors kind of huddling towards the center of the mass, just trying to, uh, one have his, dis like I said, dislocated shoulder. Another one um, has just taken a bit of a blow to the head and looks a little bit um, uh, disoriented. What in the hell did you do? And I will cast my... Timmy did him. Get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> no. Get to work. No, I'll use uh, I'll use healing word on them. Okay. Uh, make a uh, interesting a spell attack roll. So on oh, your well. spells up at the top, it should say spell attack. There should be a little thing to roll there. Ooh. She okay. she rolled a ten, so plus uh, spell. Well, attack. but that. Did it did it do both? Uh, no, um, that was the damage for that, that was the no, heal, how she much rolled she, a 10 was, before that a it wasn't a d20 10. oh was it not no that's from no. like an hour and a half ago that's yeah that's what ago. i was testing to make sure i was yeah ah oh, yeah. oh, there it is found it that's weird i only just no. showed up. can oh. i use my can i use my inspiration is it still there from the last game i played with you guys <laughs> if it's, it's on been your a little bit have you leveled up yeah. Also? Okay, good. Just checking. 10 okay. is um, unfortunately not going to be a success. <laughs> As um, you look to one and you kind of help ah, the guy with the shoulder snaps in, but you look and you're trying to figure out, but there, there are just too many targets. There's too much healing to do and a few more sailors succumb to their injuries and you're just not you're able to help them but just not quite fast enough for them to get back to their spots so um okay. right, this one's for do. all the marbles what's the last one the last one um so uh, we still need two successes oh yeah so but we only get a single failure out? left I, oh, yeah, are there failure left. Right. I yeah. meant to do so I did misspeak before so it was a um we added two because of the um, the results right. of what happened. So, but I I misspoke. So it is six. There's twice as many okay. successes as okay. failures is what you needed. So, um, okay. I apologize. Gotcha. Now so we do need one more success. So whoever whatever this next one is, is either more. going to succeed. Need two or... more. We need two, two more. more. Yeah. We're we four. have five successes, right? I think nope. you have five successes and two failures, failures right? There, there are only six of us. Two of us failed. And we've had two failures, so that's four successes. Oh, that's true. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. I hate you're being right. right. So, <laughs> so we need two more successes, and we can only have one more failure. Uh -oh. Yep. So the storm um, kicks up another few waves that toss Pixie's Fury brutally from side to side, and Dargan at the helm or I don't know if Mariah's back there, whoever yells out that um, the bearing of the compass isn't showing correctly. Um, it, something, ha either a 
a line has knocked it over and it is just kind of uh, on its side and spinning, it will take some time to pull it up, to fix it, to put it, to get it uh, to a place where it's stable and you can show a proper heading again. Um, the way the ship has been tossed around, you're not exactly sure where it is and you could be heading directly back into the storm. Um, and so you need to find a way to resume your previous path, find the heading that you were on and keep heading going in that straight direction. Um, is, mm, is there an intelligence-based check that Elvin wants to do? I was about to ask, can I make <laughs> some sort of navigation-related check? Uh, sure. How would you uh, how would you do that, if you imagine, in this storm and uh, Compass has just gone out? What would Melvin look to do in order to uh, find the path that you were on? And, and I also want to ask, sorry, um, is mm -hmm. this something that could be repaired? Is this a a problem sure. with the... Uh, could do that too. Thieves tools work or does it need to be tinkers tools? Thieves would be a little, yeah. I'd say it would be more carpenter's tools or um, even just a navigator's tools check to use your own navigation oh. tools. Or um, I do have that, but I, it's not very good. What's, what's that based on, a uh, navigation check? Well, it depends on how you're using them, is what I will okay. say. I'm not very good at them. Probably either, not but, charisma. So. Mm, <laughs> but, damn. Um, would would a would a history check be appropriate to um, locate our position based on what I know of where we've been um, and where we're trying to head? Um, let's say that uh, I I imagine that rocks that were as dastardly and frightening as I mentioned them before, like a goddess reaching up out of the sea, writing mm -hmm. to tear ships down, would probably be something that sailors have mentioned before. So let's say sure, and based, uh, you can still okay. see those in the pat, and uh, maybe can get a bearing based on that. I'm using my inspiration for this. Okay, go for it. 22 total. That is a success. You realize that you see them directly to the starboard right now, and you think, we should have headed, we went straight through those. We are 90 degrees too far uh, starboard. And so you say to the course, you need to turn 90 degrees left port and keep heading that way. And one last thing happens. The ship is now listing heavily to port, more so than the wind blowing would make sense. It means there's probably a hull breach or something like that happening beneath. Normally, you would have to send someone below to look near the bilge to see if indeed water is being taken in or do something like that or send someone running all the way down to pull up and go, you know, clearing out the bilge to look. In a storm, you can't do that. So what Help out. are you uh, going to do? Is there a lot of seaweed and stuff along the bottom of the boat? Um, usually there's a fair amount of barnacles. Um, not a there's usually not like a hula skirt of seaweed just because right. <laughs> that would really um, affect the um, drag of the boat sure, and so there, there would indeed be your some... crew as preparing to embark one of the things they probably did was clear off as much seaweed as they could is there any at all uh probably probably a bit because i could use plant growth to like make a whole lot more seaweed just sort of like chalk up a um, a crack or something like that. Does that work? What if I deceive the ship into thinking that it doesn't have a hole in it? <laughs> <laughs> that, that it's a placebo boat. No, I know, I know, I know what. We'll make a hole on the other side of the ship so it'll all balance a out. A placebo boat. <laughs> Thank you for hearing that. I liked that one. <laughs> it was a good joke. Um. Yeah. Does anybody have a better uh, idea? Sure. That's fun. I, I like I, that idea. idea yeah. than plan go. All right. Uh, Captain, Can help I me. Help her with the inspiration. That'd be great. Can I? Can I? Can I bardic inspiration? It's the last check, nether? and you are on the verge of failure and success. So let's. Uh, I'll, I will allow it. I sing to another. 
<laughs> what do you say? Uh, don't rock the boat. <laughs> no. Don't rock the boat. Don't rock the boat, baby. Uh, so, um, Nether runs to the side of the gunnel and looks down and sort of feels the bit of algae and seaweed that has crept onto the bottom of the boat um, in the um, in the time that we have been sailing. And she um, closes her eyes and says, um, to the south. And there's a sort of a green energy that flows out of her hands and moves down the wood. Um, I don't suppose I could just use plant growth on the wood. It has to be living plant, right? I think so. Yeah, okay, so the, the green energy flows down the side of the boat and under the water, and you see it sort of spread out all along underneath the waterline, glowing green up from under there. And she rolls a ooh, 12. Plus a d8, plus, plus, a, plus d8. a d8. Plus a d8, okay. Um, plus four, 16. <laughs> 16 will do it. Yes! And you hear this sort of, um, this kind of thumping sound as a big clump of, uh, seaweed just kind of sticks itself in the hauled area and, um, at least for now creates a temporary barrier as you feel the storm slowly subsiding on either side of the fury and you make your way towards a clearer open ocean mm. just quickly massive thank you to lock me up for 2000 bits yeah, seriously thank you wow for an npc in next week's thank game you. so i've told what I've told i to... forgot i forgot to get in touch with the the last <laughs> the last donor about that too but we can have some definitely multiple, do that um there's we've got a location coming up that will be great to have some npcs uh so we'll i'll get in touch with both of our npc donors um about doing that that's super fun thank you yeah, um lock me up guy. that's awesome um cool you guys survived the storm <gasps> yay Good job. Good job, um, guys. and on that i think that's where we're gonna eight o'clock we're gonna throw it to a little bit of a break we just nice. party has left salt marsh and are now sailing towards um the land of dementia and the um port of port alucine where they are told the next clue lies in their quest to unravel the cult known as the Thalassic League. Now, after departing, they ran into a storm that was, and a um, trio of storm giants. It was unclear the relationship to what the giants were, but after a little bit of trial and error and only disrupting the ritual somewhat, they found that the giants were actually trying to um, control the weather to dissipate the storm and um, thankfully having not completely disrupted that spell they went through a difficult series of skill checks in order to survive the storm the ship has taken some damage you can definitely feel the hull is not no what she used to be but you are in one piece and the weather has calmed and you are still sailing towards Port Alucine just having finished that um, harrowing battle with the storm. So um, is there anything you guys would like to do or say? Or, yeah, uh, I just want to say thank you to lock me up again for 500 bits. <laughs> thank you very much. Very, very generous. That's a D20 inspiration. Finally! Prion. Yeah, thank you very much. You much got two last session. I did. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not even gonna repeat what Chelsea's just. I think Jade cast me. modify memory on himself. <laughs> gotcha. Never. David, this thing's heavy. <laughs> Thank you, Jade. Getting getting your reps in. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I've just started. So, uh, anything else? Or the group, um, you feel you have probably another um, another eight days ahead of you in the open ocean before you reach. And Neris is gonna go. Uh, wait! Don't you dare! Sorry, almost had a puppy. 
pee on me. Anyway, Anaris is gonna go find Mariah and take her to the side and try to find out what just happened while she was drunk forever. <laughs> the giants. So, okay, just just for me. Do, are you saying for sure in game in canon? Anaris spent the last seven days soused in the hold. I would say even three. that's a little aggressive for me. <laughs> I'd say three. She's come up. She. I know she wanted to interrogate the orc and get information from him as much as she can, and try to you know make him like her buddy slash servant. And she saved his so life. So you're Stockholm syndroming this guy a bit. So. I, yeah, I was going to mention that. You guys have a hostage yeah. um, on the ship at the moment. Fireball. So, <laughs> I do have one more of those today. <laughs> oh my god. No. So you say you're just trying... What What are you trying... What, what have you been doing with him and Eris? <laughs> she's, she's, she's been downstairs drunk for a day or two, but... I definitely want to be interrogating and trying to get information and build some kind of rapport with the guy that I did just save. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so he obviously can't talk. Is he bound? Not if he doesn't seem like he's going to try to escape or kill us. Okay. No, he won't. Um, and if, as he's cut his bounds off, he can slumps and kind of looks around and just kind of gives you a long cold hard stare you good I can save you from a hanging but uh I don't think I can regrow your tongue <laughs> so how do you feel about being a pirate A lot of alcohol involved, money. He shakes his head and then he re he looks in his hand and... She'll look around and if I have a, a parchment and quill and pass it off to him. Um, want to play charades? <clears throat> he will write down, not pirate. And so do you. What were no, you no, before? No, no. And he writes and he says, um, Oh no! Oh no! And turns it around and says, Make each of your friends swear to protect me. Oh. And I will tell you. Oh, God. <sighs> well, all right. I'm not going to do anything to you. I mean, I did just expend a spell slot and all that to try to save you, so there is that. So let's go find the captain. Mariah! I demand you speak now, even though you have food in your mouth. Uh, what? Oh, no. <laughs> you found up. me. I'll hold up the note. You think we can get them to do that? For your, your tongueless man. Mm. Well, the last time I attempted to secure someone's safety, uh, that blew up in my <laughs> face. So I'm not really feeling comfortable with my track record for that. Like well, how about you him? just swear and I'll deal with the others? Would you like me to talk to him? Maybe we can get more information before we make such a binding agreement. Yeah, sure. As long as you don't hurt him. Oh, I won't hurt him. Or freak him out, scare him off, whatever. Uh, 
But let's see there. here. We have a level two hype train guy, by the way. Wow! Thank you for nice. your generosity, friends. Um, hmm, let me just see here. If my, um... Fey ability has gained... Yeah, the DC has gone up. Um... So I'll just walk down to the hold where he is. Hello, my name is Debri. What's your name? He writes down on the piece of paper, Grulak. Grulak. And I look at him and all of a sudden become very charming as I use Fey Presence. He needs um, to make a wisdom saving throw. DC 15. I've rolled a natural one. He is charmed for me for the next six <coughs> seconds. What are you? Um, he begins to write um, uh Takes him 12 seconds you see the word write. uh, he writes slowly and he sa it says um, <clears throat> um, black network oh. cap and then he just kind of looks up at you and raises an eyebrow black network <clears throat> I think we've had dealings with those before and he kind of just crumples up the um, paper in one hand and takes this pencil and just not even by breaking it like this, just squeezing it between his two fingers, it snaps in half and he glowers at you. Sorry, I can't hear you. Thank you, Grulok. <laughs> and uh, Nether leaves the room, goes and finds Mariah. You found me. <laughs> Is that watermelon? How did you oh, get yeah. watermelon out here? I sealed it really well. Ah. Right, so you know that orc or half orc that's down there with no tongue? Yeah, the one that uh, Nene picked up. He's part of the Black Network. Fuck. Might be something useful to have on the ship. Especially if he owes one of us a favor. We can't allow him to have contact with anyone outside the ship then. Unless it's under very controlled circumstances. Right. All okay, right. I'll go tell. I'll go tell, Inaris. Yeah. Inaris, why did you save that Zentirim agent? Fuck the what? The agent of the Zentirim. <clears throat> well, fuck. The Raven Queen told me to. That's why. Oh, well. It, not necessarily a bad thing. Mariah's going to kill me, isn't she? No. I don't think not so. Not that violent. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> nah, she's fine. She's had a watermelon. I, she's well, too drunk is... most of the time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Never. You should have seen what I did with the, uh, the watermelon, Ryan. <laughs> Ever put your guard down? Turned it into a keg. <laughs> Like, did yeah. you soak it? Can he be trusted at all? Well, this, as long as there's only one of him on the ship, I would say that we're all right. If there's more than one, well, they could potentially try and take over if it's in their best interest to. There has to be a reason why she wanted me to, so he must. 
It could have just been not his time, but... How often do you do the things you do because a goddess is whispering in your ear? All the time. She's the one that called me up from the Underdark. If it weren't for her, I'd be dead. She's the one that brought right. me to... Well, to a woman that holds my heart, and then... Here, and I suppose I can call you, uh... You lot the, uh, the F word, the friend, the friend word. Oh yes, my personal opinions about faith aside. We're all friends here. She has me do questionable things at times, but she, she hates the undead. She prefers the natural order of life and death. Oh, I agree with that. Which is why I might be in a little bit of trouble for the vampire thing, but we're not going to talk about that. That was a little bit of personal revenge. If I might be in trouble for that, but <clears throat> that aside. Sometimes it's just simply not someone's time to go, and she calls on me to save them or intervene. And sometimes... They try to escape it when it's their time, and I'm tasked with taking care of it. Well, having someone with contacts in the Zentirum could be a useful thing. So far as I know, they haven't directly wronged any of us. Fair point. Do you think he can be... Bribed with money, perhaps? Gold? Grease is well, I just got information? information out of them through magic. Maybe you can get information out of him through whatever it is you do. It's an awful suspicious look. The fact that you freed him and saved him from dying because of an invisible voice whispering in your ear. Well... I have a little bit of experience with that sort of thing, but part of the time I think it's just all in my head. Not necessarily. I mean, there's conditions that it could be, but what does it tell you? Typically, if it's a deity, they it doesn't ask tell for me you to, to do anything. Them. It just sings to me and protects me and protects the people I think are worthy of protection. Is that such a bad thing? No, but I don't think it's a deity. And there's never been any sort of condition other than just gratitude. Well, sounds like a pretty decent partnership then. I work hard for the Raven Queen, but I'd be, I'd be dead if it weren't for her. Well, I hope the Raven Queen has a good reason for her getting a Zentirum aboard our ship. She just wanted him alive, but that was the only way to keep him alive. But I'll see what information I can get out of him. I may have to fudge and say that we've all sworn to protect him, but you know. I wouldn't lie like that, but you can tell him that the captain knows and that you know and I know and so far we haven't told anyone else. bargaining chip take my chances and see what happens thank you Debbie. very helpful and I guess I will go back down and try to uh, talk to him doll is going to be present okay. invisible kind of looks up at you as you approach and gives you a look you can only meet, assume means so Is the door to where he's in? He's in the hold, right? He was, but you freed him, so he's kind of standing up, leaning against one of the bulkheads right now. His, oh, um, I did tell Anaris that his name was Gul'dak, also. Right, his, uh, um, you know, 
timber-like arms are just crossed across his chest as he's leaning back against the um, bulkhead. What do you say we go to the uh, kitchens and get something to eat? Some ale. He smiles and follows you. I'll get us some food, some ale, put it down on the table. So, I don't know what sort of... I'm not diplomatic, so let's just, let's just get it out here. I know. The captain knows. And Debris knows. No one else ever has to know. No one ever has to know that you're on our ship, either. But we could use some assistance. Perhaps you stay on the ship with us. You give us some information. Nobody ever has to know where you are. Let them think you hung. <clears throat> and of course, it's not for free. Gold is involved. Uh, Rulach holds up uh, the sort of bit of the... Um... Well, what is half of the pencil that you gave him that he crushed and kind of looks around for something and says, reaches out a hand. And he does not have a piece of paper. If, if I have paper on him, I'll give it to him. Okay. Reaches out and he writes and it says, heard talk in jails. Make the elf and the triton swear. then we're good. How about if they decide to attack you, I just stand between you. I saved you. You're my responsibility. I'll defend you. Is that not good enough? <laughs> You're alive. Make, make a persuasion check. Please. <sighs> I'm a drow. What can I say? I'm not very persuasive. <laughs> um, he writes something down, turns it around, and it says, I've heard she's cut much skinnier, much thicker people than you in half. Ooh. The Triton. <laughs> that pretty little princess, what the hell is she gonna do? She's pissed off about a book because someone stole a piece of poetry. No, I don't think so. Well, You've also got the cap captain and uh, Debris. He'll write it down, he said. Think about it. They give their word, I talk. Well, obviously you're not going to talk, you're going to write, but true. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> shows up. You've been talking mad shit. <laughs> guttural laugh and then drowns the rest of his ale. Or downs the rest of his ale. Let's, uh... Let's go say what's up to the rest of them. It's not like you're going anywhere. He gestures as if, be my guest. <laughs> so she was saying all of that really, really rude stuff. You didn't hear it. In, in like the general public. No. no. In the kitchen. I thought that they were, oh, I thought no, that they were the like whole... in the dining hall. It was hall. a pretty private conversation. So. Never heard it though. That's There's true. another Could choose to yeah. tell a friend. She files it away. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Whatever, it's fine. Uh, I guess she would lead them to uh, Mariah and try to find out where 
the, well, the elf gather up are. the people. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. Pretty I call a meeting. <laughs> okay. Probably below deck trying to repair stuff. Continue learning his, the new trade. Yeah, yes. so you can. Um, we will um, figure that out in a second because as bosun, you can lead the crew to make repairs a certain amount of hit points on the ship per day. So uh, <coughs> we'll roll that in a second. But um, so uh, uh, what am I saying? My God. Okay. You, I assume you assemble in the captain's quarters. All right. Hi. Meeting is called to order. Over there's a long table, Mariah's quarters, all kind of brought around there, and there is a towering half orc standing there, um, what are scars we across his face. With again, us? Has this? No, he's not allowed in. Hell no! All right. Can you just gonna leave also, him out? Standing, Thorian, she will definitely walk in, immediately clock where Melvin is sitting makes a very, very like pointed look to him and then sits as far away as possible. But like the whole time is like... Melvin is sitting near Mariah, <laughs> ready to take notes on the meaning. <laughs> <laughs> Infuriating. All right. Can, can, can Dragon keep the orc busy? The, the half orc busy? Sure. I'm watching him. Oh, well that too. All right. We have a black network agent on our ship, thanks to the mercy of the Raven Queen. So he has indicated that he is willing to share information if we promise him safety. And that has to be a promise made by every individual. It cannot come on behalf of the party from one person. He's specifically looking for promise of safety from you two, and I will nod my head towards Prion and Saran. But I've just set the plank up. Um, Do you want me to jump off of it just to make you happy? No, I did it earlier, it's fine. I've already <laughs> offered, he said no. Um, uh, what's the black network again? Are they pirates? Zentarum. No, 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 no. They they operate. Well, I'm sure they have ships, but they operate primarily um, in the Sword Coast region. Generally, they have their fingers in all sorts of pies, and none of it is good. We uh, a found a couple of, of their of agents. Money. They found we found a couple of their agents dead in the uh, lizard folk uh, den. Uh, part of a group that had come to attack them. And there's evidence of their agents being in Salt Marsh as well. Oh, that little halfling lady. She was one as well. No. Not oh. that we know of. But uh, that's one of the things that Jolek was pointing us toward. That first person he killed. Remember what, you, what he said? You guys told me about it after? Referencing the Black Network, those two other guys that he killed when we found him the other night? Possibly Black Network. We should treat them as enemies. And we're going to keep one on our board of ship. I'm not going to argue with that statement, but I would like to know exactly why. Why what? Why we treat them as enemies. Not the sort of enemy that we automatically need to draw a sword against. It's more of a, I don't trust that our priorities align with theirs automatically. That could and so I a would, lot of organizations, though. That is the case for most people, and I tend to keep people at a good arm's length when I don't know what their intentions are. So, so what is he asking exactly that we don't harm him just for the fact that he's a Zentirim? He's asking he that we don't harm him, and he wants everyone to swear. And in return for that? Information. What kind of information? Hi. Everything he knows. 
Okay, but that doesn't really answer my question. Do about we really need the categorically what kind of? Yeah, I agree with Serene. What information do we need that he has? If the Zentarum are <laughs> infiltrating Salt Marsh, and we are ostensibly now leaders of Salt Marsh, then we want to know exactly what we're dealing with. Right. He might have some information. That might be useful, but yes, it's a play on an unknown. So. so after, so let's say that we do agree to keep him safe. After that has happened and we've gotten whatever information we can from him, what does it look like? I mean, do we just drop him off somewhere? Like we told Jolek to go away or how we sent that other woman back? I mean, he's almost been killed once anyway. Well, sending people back has clearly not been a good idea. So let's just strike that from the option, shall we? I mean, sure, that's fine. But what would the plan be? If 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 I'm right, then if he tells us any secrets about the Zenterum, then he can't go back. So it's not so much that he's asking that we don't hurt him now. He's asking that we keep him safe from those who would try to kill him for what he says. And so then he'd be part of our crew. We have all sorts of quote-unquote unsavory individuals who are a part of our crew. Oh, I know that. Yeah. I mean, you're all criminals. Thanks. Hey, appreciate I'm not that. a criminal. I'm not a criminal either. Thank you very much. It's all the same to me. You don't fight for Persona, so... Oh my goddess. Well said, oh. Sarayan. <laughs> Thank you, Wave. Then, then why are you with us criminals then, Sarayan? Because Persona has called me to be here. Maybe we can be redeemed. Yes, exactly. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to have that discussion anytime soon. <laughs> um, Let's Sorry, focus on Wade. the matter at hand. Are we going to protect this fellow? I've given him my word. I was told to save him once. I've given as if he's I told him I can't betray, speak for him. If he's willing to betray his superiors and give us information, then the very least we can do is not deliver him back to them. I'll give they my word that I won't did. harm him. But if he steps foot on this any foot wrong on this ship, lays a hand on anyone, I'll cut him down. Oh, that, I like that idea. I, Fair I, enough. I need, I need you know, to just think about it. <clears throat> Wave. It Wave. occurs to me that if we let it get known that he is Black Network, we might be able to use him to figure out who else on our ship is Black Network. If they did, they'd kill him themselves. He'll stay with me. Okay. You hear Serena. Yes, Sarayan. Should we try to, to save this this Centaurum? I mean maybe I could I could convert him. Do the Zentarum worship Persana? I don't know who they worship. Do they worship Umberly or Valkyr? I'd have to ask him. Then it's of little consequence to me. Do what you want. Okay. Talk to me again when you are serious. And you kind of feel the weapon grow cold against your back. <clears throat> you see Saran welling up. She wipes away a, a single tear but tries to do so covertly. Dust flew in my eye. Um, not that anyone asked. But, um, it just does. Uh, what did everyone else say? Sorry, I was in my own world. I think we should agree not to harm him and agree that as long as he's a part of our crew, we'll keep him as safe as any other member of our crew. In and if he... For information that it and if he uses. demonstrates that he is a danger to the crew, then he is no longer a part of the crew. I think that's any fair. active attempt to harm anyone else on this ship or to otherwise undermine the authority of the captain and um, rest of the leadership on this ship 
And, and I don't want him leaving the ship either when we make port. Okay, yeah, you have an eye for me. All right. <clears throat> so we tell him that who's going to stop him? From he's leaving? he. We will keep him safe as long as he agrees to be part of the crew mm -hmm. and confined to the ship until such time as we think he has earned our trust. Sounds succinct to me. Reasonable. Fine, then let's bring him in. Okay. Open the door and he's sort of leaning against the masthead, makes his way in. Stands there, serious Sorry. looking, sturdy footed, arms across his chest, looking at all of you. All right, Gorlock, here's the deal. Uh, we have all come to an agreement that we are willing to offer protection, and you will receive that word from every single individual at this table. However, there are a couple caveats to that. Our protection is dependent on you being a loyal and hardworking member of this ship. Any action against any member of this crew, including the people sitting at this table, either uh, violence or covert attempts to undermine our authority or anything else, you are no longer part of the crew and you are no longer afforded our protection. You also don't leave the ship until you prove that you have been a loyal member of this crew. All right. We're in agreement. Sounds like the terms are understood. Let's go around the table. I, Mariah, give my word. I, Aeneris, give my word. We gotta do this. Okay. I'm Prion, and I'll give my word. I give my word. My name is Debris. Look to um, the children. <laughs> <clears throat> I serene give my word. Be writing! <laughs> Melvin? Oh, uh, I, Melvin, give my word. Check his notebook. For persona's sake. All right. Welcome to the crew, Gorlock. Uh, we'll see Dragon for your duties. And uh, he, he holds up a finger first and starts to write on a piece of paper he's tucked in his pocket. And um, it says, Report to Salt Marsh. Take a squad. Pose as Solmore Private Guard. Report to Scarin Wave Chaser. <sighs> Do it. Yeah. <laughs> he like that he leaves is... it on the table and yeah. then turns out and goes and walks onto the deck of the ship and immediately begins there's this one uh, two sailors sort of hauling this crate back and forth uh, or not back and forth but across the deck and he pushes one out of the way and just with his own body strength <clears throat> takes the crate and starts pulling it by himself across the deck it's queek way <laughs> yeah you uh, basically <laughs> you guys think he's single Rain is like yes. sitting there yes, and is I like, do. <laughs> why am I feeling things? <laughs> <clears throat> is there a hey. Mrs. Queequay? <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't see what you see, but you know. Did you not just? There's just something about the way he moved that. He's got the moves like Jagger. <laughs> He's got the moves like Jagger. Oh no. Well, um, I suppose we file that revelation away for when we're headed back in the direction of Salt Marsh. It's very yeah. dangerous. I feel like that's what you do with most of our revelations, so that makes sense. It's not like we trust Wonder if Anders is in on it. 
He's too naive to be in anything like this. He is the kind of person whose idealism and energy can be taken advantage of by someone who knows how to manipulate those emotions. But is there he's an gold idiot. in Salt Marsh, though? Money. Is it common it's knowledge? Not necessarily that, um, a bad thing. Scarron. Yeah, it was around the table. It was said that he sent for you. Did, did he not, Scarron? Wave chaser. This is out of character, by the way. Um, sent for me specifically. He said no. He sent for Mariah. That was around the table when we were talking. When we Morning, first, you talking? When we first met him, you got. Oh him. yeah, you he was him. the one who brought me to Salt Marsh. Yeah. Yeah. And that was common. Knowledge I didn't know me. that until later. Yeah. Well, it's not like common knowledge because I didn't find out until. Yeah, yeah. but it's common. It's in. knowledge to the group because we were. Yeah, all it is. The time. Yeah. yeah. So the question is, why does he want? Why did he want you to come to Salt Marsh then? He, and I will, just to clarify, Mariah received a cryptic note when she was still mm -hmm. in Luskin that Nether was maybe in trouble. And yeah. um, the note said it would reveal who this person was so you can express your gratitude, you know, um, appropriately at the time, when oh, the time okay. comes. And he, gave, he said those words at mm -hmm. one point that indicated that that was the contact of Mariah's who yeah. said, Nether may need your help. <clears throat> yeah. It sounds so to me that... He didn't order her that... to come to Salt Marsh. I don't know if yeah, that was yeah, yeah. Sorry. But she didn't order her to come, but it was him that brought her here, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everything that he has done via Anders has been in support of our actions so and our actions are in support of salt marsh and especially now that we've put ourselves with anders and especially against others you know we've put oh, ourselves so on the side the of a Everyone in Salt Marsh wants what's best for Salt Marsh. They just have different ideas about what's best for Salt Marsh. This isn't a like, at least on the surface, this isn't a you know good forces versus bad forces. This is forces with different priorities, right? We hope. And the <laughs> the positive way to look at things, the glass ha like half full version, is that yes, our goals align, but. The opposite side of that coin is that, in a way, we've been just as manipulated as Anders. Except it doesn't require... Now and Anders doesn't. True. Well, something to think about when we get home. One thing at a time, indeed. So... <clears throat> As you dismiss the meeting, a couple more days pass. There will be um, 14 total for the journey. And unless you're trying to get us there, DM, I would like to have a moment. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, take it. Okay. I was... No, it's, it's it's also totally cool if you want to move yeah. things ahead, because this moment could happen any time. But... Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So at some point... Um when uh, Nether's on watch or um, she has uh, some privacy, she'll look out at the ocean and she'll sort of say, there are a lot of people on this ship that have powerful beings that they look to for advice. Some of them even speak to them directly, tell them what to do. I've never, I've never gotten that impression from you you've helped me I think you want what's best for me but if there's something you want from me there's something you want me to do for you if you are some sort of deity if there's a sign or something you could show me do you want me to pray? Do you want? Do you want me to 
build a temple to you? Do you want me to convert people to you? I, I don't know anything about you. Is there a way you could let me know? I, I would... I, I would like to find out on my own without telling anybody else. So I, I don't want to, to ask any of them, but that's what I'll have to do if I don't hear from you. <clears throat> you speak those words. Um... You uh yeah, excuse me. Just one moment while I find the appropriate thing. And the whale comes up and just <laughs> <sighs> Bye. <laughs> That's the gnarl from Elf. Oops. Um. You, I'm trying to, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to find a handout that I sent to you guys previously. Um. Well. I will uh, maybe do that another time. So you um, hear a um, <sighs> sound behind you. And Look behind me, <laughs> turning around, you see. Oh, this will just be the easiest way to do it. What looks to be fey creature, clad in a dress. Ah, tears <laughs> coming down her eyes, going <gasps> with no voice. And then it kind of reaches out to you almost with like a little bit of kindness and puts her hands gently over your own throat and grabs just a little bit around your voice box. You can feel the fingers feeling your own and then it um, touches its own throat and you can see that it sticks its fingers into its own neck where its throat had been slit sometime when it had been living. And then you feel a push and suddenly it feels for a moment like you are falling off the side of the ship as it rockets through the waves. And then you hear a, um, a, uh, this, uh, you feel a very firm hand on your shoulder. You realize you are leaning over the ship just very slightly and a large half orcish hand is on your shoulder. You never even turned around and it kind of turns you towards him and just goes mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. <sighs> and he turns around and goes about his work. So, DM, did I yeah. get the feeling that this apparition wanted me under the water? No. Okay. Did I get the, the feeling that she wants me to give her my voice? Or say something specific for her? Yes. But as odd and creepy as it is, you feel that this vision so far has not been displeased with what you've been doing. Okay. Go and sorry, maybe not as clear as you wanted. But, no, that's uh, fine. No, that, I don't, wasn't looking for clarity, just looking for 
I wanted to know if, if I was on the wrong path. I trust that I would have gotten a sign. So that was what I'm looking for. We're good. It, the, uh, as never it was touching your throat, it was almost as if it was examining. Language. <laughs> it was almost examining how your voice was developing, and it seemed pleased when it felt the way your throat felt in its hands. Oh. Oh huh. my God. Um. Nope. The, what? The voice, uh, it's the voice teacher. You hope you don't get. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Let me. See oh no! When they grab your larynx. Oh, I, I hate when people do that. Um, They're like, oh, I'm just going to wiggle your larynx back and forth. No, you no, no, you're, you're not. not. <laughs> no. You're right There's so much tension. Yeah, you're strangling me. <laughs> um, so apropos of nothing out of that scene that we just left, uh, Sarayan for the rest of the time has a very different experience. Um, that if it's okay for me to add for flavor, I would like to at least talk about. Because <laughs> oh. I think it offers more insight into, uh, well, we all know what kind of character she is. But so, how much time oh, no. has left oh, no. when Sean began that? How much time had passed? Like, how much time did we have left after allowing... I want to call it after that. After you've welcomed him on the ship, you have about another seven days or so, seven to ten days. So. Okay, so during that time, Sarayan is doing what literally every girl who is, I'm sorry, that's painting with broad strokes. If you were anything like me in high school <laughs> and prior to, anytime you were mad at somebody, but you didn't have the words really to express why you were hurt or frustrated or upset. Kind of just like wandering around and like placing yourself in the same area as the person that you're angry with um but pretending to be doing things that are totally not relevant to them so it's like she would kind of keep positioning herself near melvin but she'd have like a book and she'd be like farm boy yes exactly Touch me that picture <laughs> So that's exactly what she does for like the whole week because she is still so mad at him. But the whole time, like at meals, it's like if he addresses her, even if to, it's still asked to like pass something on the table, she like ignores it and acts like she doesn't hear anything. But at the same time, like she really desperately wants him to apologize. And so she keeps giving him the opportunity to apologize. You so can't stop thinking of... about him, guys. <laughs> So that's the sort of dance that we have going on, at least as far as I'm concerned, from Sarayan's yeah. perspective. Oh, oh my god. I don't know how Melvin would respond. Uh, super awkwardly, um, Melvin is going to notice that this is happening and just bury himself more into his note-taking and, and doing all of the, like, accounting for the ship, making sure we have all of the right equipment and that She's the, following me. She's gonna <laughs> slit my throat at night. <laughs> a little bit of paranoia. Yeah, uh -huh. probably a no, moment go in the, happens. Uh, Saran notes. There's probably a moment happens, Saran too, where you're like, oh, "What is he writing about? What what is exactly. he distracting I'm himself? Just, like, with? How is he journaling? Doing. And what is his moody, um, unjustified outrage? I, I want to know what he's writing. You kind of work yeah. your way around, and it's like eight sacks of um, of flour. <laughs> 52 packs of jerky. It's not even <laughs> raining about me! <laughs> Saran chomp, 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 clomps off, uh, sits in the corner, and you hear aggressive, much in the way that uh, Chelsea types, but it's like <laughs> aggressive. <laughs> okay, rude. <laughs> but it's like aggressive. Rude. Uh, <laughs> and it's like she's doing big flourishes, trying to even like get him to look her way just by movement. <laughs> Sort of and thing. he's very much trying not to look studiously ignoring her has the blinders <laughs> on <laughs> she she looks away he looks she looks he looks exactly away. that's exactly what <laughs> i'm like, happening you two need to get drunk together <laughs> oh my god <laughs> who said that <laughs> sounded so familiar uh, just quickly um, this region. before i do um, forget an antiqui oh god, god how do we say that Antiquitas? Yes. Maybe. Spent 300 gold for a D6 inspiration. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, very cool. Thank 
Nice. Ooh. So, thanks. Thanks. Our first gold inspiration purchase. That's a second. Think, right? um, second? Pixie oh, was the okay. first, yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, the guy who never wins. Of course me? she was. I won. Thank you very, very much. Awesome. I appreciate it. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you all for the support. Uh, as the days go on, it gets to the point where Mariah, even for you, it's been a little while since you've been on a voyage this long, and usually it's following coastlines or going from um, spot to spot, but just following a heading in open ocean for this long, it's got me just a little bit nervous. Um, none of you have seen land aside from some jagged rocks for almost two weeks. Um, you kind of, the ship becomes your island a bit and it f begins to feel smaller and smaller as you're on it. Uh, if I and, may, um, Melvin has definitely taken full inventory of the ship like six times, even though he gotcha. doesn't need to, just to give himself something to do. And when he doesn't yeah. have something to do, he is pacing frantically because he is terrified of the fact that he hasn't seen land in two weeks. <laughs> and I test the plank. Was <laughs> yeah, I test the plank every day when I go fishing for the group. And so, sorry to, to uh, interrupt your train of thought. Another thing that had occurred to me to do that on this long journey, um, Nether would try to each and every one of the crew, she would try to use heart sight on just to get an overall idea of what the moral compass of the crew is. Is it a once per day thing? Uh, no, it's she. The, it's just something that pixies can do, that sprites can do. At will? At will. Are you aware that it happens? No. Interesting. Even though your force is it specify that it doesn't? I'm just it's I just hadn't like thought of that until now. But um, so heart sight. The sprite touches a creature and magically knows the creature's current emotional state. If the target fails a DC ten charisma saving throw. The sprite also knows the creature's alignment. Celestial feeds and uh, fiends and undead automatically fail the saving throw. Ah, it's interesting that it has to touch the creature. Um, yes. Again, it is a sprite, but um... <clears throat> ah, um, must have been a bug. Would <laughs> smushed. Would you? You all would probably feel pretty normal about doll landing on you as creepy as doll is, right? Doll would do it invisibly, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Sarayan would not even clock it. She's so intent yeah. on her own armor, thing. I wouldn't notice, yeah. Man, it's fair to say that my reactions are th they cool, would be though. able to do that. Um, so, but it, I mean, it doesn't and, say anything about it being a spell. So, as far as I can tell, yeah. you can just fly around invisibly and just touch everybody. Even um, if they noticed, she wouldn't care. Okay, it's probably fair that. Oh, I already, I already touched you. The alignments. long ago. <laughs> of uh of the uh other player characters so uh, we don't have to go around and say it at the moment but um, i am yeah we'll uh maybe i'm more interested those. i'm more interested in the crew like not 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 oh. like the party i'm more interested in like the general moral compass of the crew to, like find out if it's like if it's all mostly like you know chaotic good or you know, it'd be interesting to know who the lawful good people in the group are, or who the chaotic good yeah. people are, and neutral are... good. And then if there's like a couple of chaotic evils, I'll be like, oh, <laughs> maybe we should keep an eye on those. Well, Gurlock is lawful evil. Um, you will find Too a couple other lawful ship. evils on yeah. board. Uh, most are of lawful um, persuasions. Um, Following orders. A couple true neutrals. Um, and lawful neutrals it's uh there's not a lot of um chaotic mindsets uh, i'll give you a little bit of a breakdown um okay. later but uh, nothing really surprises you no chaotic evils um no neutral evils so is there anybody who's just like the shining billy bud beautiful like <laughs> amazing like, good hearted I'm here, <laughs> Yeah. Dargan. Team Melvin. Dargan. 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 Melvin. He, Dargan. Melvin. Melvin. Never steal someone's intellectual well, Melvin, property. I'm just, I'm just standing here. You know. Hashtag opera oh. jokes. Hell yeah. And, yeah. So as continues, um, you know, 
the expanse of ocean lying between your heading and your destination just continues to shrink. Um, and as the days pass, just as you're beginning to feel nervous that these stellar and lunar observations you've made were inaccurate, the thread line of the horizon is frayed and an end to the water slowly begins to reveal itself. You see two bays clearly visible um, cut into the land and a few smaller islands just off the coast of this place. Reflections from the high sun dance off of many copper sheathed roofs belonging to stately buildings decorating the rocky coastline. And as you breathe a sigh of relief out of the fog coming to either side of this land, you see enormous sails beginning to emerge. Some are hanging far back, but a giant ship of the line, as you might call it, a huge ship, maybe twice as long as the Pixie's Fury, begins to make its way towards you. I need to know, are you flying any colors? Are you flying any flags, specifically? Um, Shouldn't we have to be flying that mark? Yeah. yeah, aren't we supposed to be flying what's his face's mark? Eleander's or um or salt marshes? I, I salt I'm... marsh colors for for when we capture ships at least. Oh. We're not required to fly them under normal operation, but we're supposed to be flying them if we capture ships of the We need to get our own flag. What are you know, what are the <laughs> options here? Either we, we do salt marshes colors. What happens if they're no colors? Well, I then you are not that, indicating yourself as a member of any nation or faction. Is that a good thing or a bad um, thing on the sea? It depends. This ship clearly seems to be a naval vessel of the nation you're approaching. So I am important. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> then we should put up colors. Of, of salt marsh. Salt marsh. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you run, um, you yell, and you hear the orders um, um, yell, and actually one of the uh, smaller human and younger human men, they say, Hey, bunting tosser, get up there and throw up the salt marsh colors. And he goes, oh, all right. And he grabs a box full of cloths, and you can see him flying up the salt marsh flag. And um, then um, a couple flags go up across this ship of the line you see that says um, uh, salt marsh stay prepare for emissary is what the flags no co communicate okay all right we'll do follow instructions okay so furl the sails and the ship approaches and kind of stops a little ways out and you see a small or a um, dinghy get lowered down and rowing out you see a crew of naval uniformed humans almost every single one of them is human actually and they are all wearing these long blue coats white shirts little ha tricorn hats rowing out and standing up in the ship um, is a immaculately dressed human with a enormous very poncy hat <laughs> multiple feathers coming out at least three medals on it and almost like you think he's wearing armor for a second then you realize no that's just the amount of medals he is wearing on his chest who's and, he he's um, handsome there's it's another captain zap Brannigan, of course <laughs> and oh they row their way towards and you see a um Eventually, uh, assuming you throw down the ladder, a Where, uh, sure. Where's Kiff? <laughs> a, uh, Nether is going to take this opportunity to change into a um, younger version of herself. Okay. And sort of turn herself into a cabin child appearance as opposed to. I guess you hear this. the ladders and help them up. Yeah, you hear it's a voice yell, prepare to here. receive his excellency. And oh um, a Dealing with these person sorts of people. climbs up and you see a also decorated, but lesser so, um, thin, um, older human man step up and say, look about the ship. Salt marsh. 
I? Not all of us. It's been a while, Salt Marsh. Welcome. Welcome. Ah, and then you see the very um, high-dressed figure start to climb up. May I present his grace, Jean-Francois, Duke La Rochenois, Lord Admiral of the Grand Fleet of the Mentelier, High Chancellor of the Third Re-Resurrected Order of the Amber Lily, Navigator Extraordinaire of the Palace of Enlightenment, Emeritus, Distinguished Bearer of the Ivory Helm, Most Honorable Viceroy de Moussel, Third Earl of Chateau Four, the Most Eminent Counselor and Vice Chair of the Fleckerlin Hospital, Honorary Bestowed, Luminous Knight Commander of the Order of the Crystal Dragon, Victory be his on land and each sea on the many realms. And he whoop, bows his um, uh, uh, compensating his hat off and bows deeply. Yeah. So Rayan matches his bow, but as a curtsy. God. But of course we know that she's not very curt, like she's not very graceful. How so secure I'm imagining is, is... she like kind of stumbles on her way back. How, how secure is, is his footing coming in? Is he like on a gangplank or what's going on? He's climbing um, up the ladder. Right? He's, he's climbed up a rope ladder. Has he got his sea legs? Is he handsome? He seems to. Um, he <laughs> has a very sharp, it's a very sharp facial features. He's got kind of a hawk-like um, face uh, and his eyes look um, suspicious and um, with a air of intense self-superiority as they look about mm -hmm. all of you. So Rayan recognizes um, that look. Melvin will will sort of uh, uh, welcome aboard Jean Francois, and he will actually repeat all of the titles um, which he has written down. Much. Wow! Terrain I did I did not catch, eyes. but Melvin definitely would have. Uh, just quickly, massive thank you to Pixie, who's flying the Pride flags for five hundred bits. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Thank you very much, Pixie. That's a D twenty P. Uh, yeah. As he comes up on the ship, and I wait for Melvin to finish rattling off his long list of names, and then I will Hello. um not bow quite as low as uh, either Sarayan or his announcer man. Um, but I say, "Welcome to the Pixie's Fury." Uh, I'm Captain Mariah Nerdress. How can we be of service? You are welcome to sail our waters, Mariah Nerdras. And he extends his hand, but he does it like this way. And he has two very like large rings that he reaches out towards you. I will vomit a little bit in my mouth and then <laughs> I will take his hand and I will, I, I have visions of my mother doing this when I was a child. I was like, okay, I'll just fucking kiss the ring. Are they ring pops or something? Ugh. Yeah. He looks very pleased and he says, um, your ship may travel in our Admiral Sea. Thank you for receiving me in such courtesies. Or... It is a bit refreshing to dispense with, the, well, I suppose pleasant appearances and, and uh, pleasantries. Uh, mm. Uh, you must have had a long journey at sea. Everyone is very, uh, well, so casual. That is fine. <laughs> I take no offense to the way that you are. I'm dressed in like knightly armor. Like, oh, like literally poncy armor. I look he, cool. Uh, he, uh, despite that, um, it's the fanciest uniform you've ever seen. And I should remark that he is also wearing a <coughs> mask um sort of like over like a uh, masquerade mask um his nose is revealed but there is it's beautifully embroidered with naval themes um you think you actually see real gemstones shining in the light um in, in fact his whole outfit is just dripping with wealth i don't know where that's coming from either <laughs> um <clears throat> and even the other soldiers look fairly nicely dressed and they are all wearing masks um indeed the lieutenant that came up had a mask that covered almost his entire face so the um uh the vocals were a bit muffled uh can i make a history check 
about this sure. mask tradition. And just quickly, Melvin got that D20 inspiration as well by the look of it. Very good. Oh, great. Well, I'll use it right now. Why not? Uh... Well, wow, that was sad. I rolled an 8 and a 9 for a total of 16. You've heard of people in Baldur's Gate, sometimes in um, Waterdeep, throwing parties a la Porta Lucine, in which everyone wears a mask. These masquerades. Um, but uh, usually it's a party thing. <laughs> that's, you know, that's kind of it. It's a little weird to see masquerade masks being worn by soldiers and admirals as they go about their duty. So, um, so this is unusual uh, even in Porta Lucine. <clears throat> seems like uh indeed and okay. so the um admiral then says captain you may take your ship to shore there is a dock prepared for special guests of uh the allies of port of Demetlieu, which we count salt marsh as one Appreciate i would stand at your ship and see how it sails compared to my pride here and he goes and assumes mm. a pose um at the front of the ship and looks back just over his shoulder barely and nods to his lieutenant and lieutenant says, the Admiral has indicated that you may take him ashore now, Captain. Make underway now, please. Okay. Um, I have a technical question. What is the, yeah. um, <laughs> what of the six abilities is the one that is involved with steering a ship? Well. It be water vehicles. But like um, what, 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 um, skill check what ability. what ability is that based it on it can kind of depend um that's what okay. it's not assigned one um some people it, it, it can be survival to kind of just feel the waves and do a really smooth sure. like regular um uh uh i guess sorry um trip or if you had someone else at the helm i would argue since you have a full trained crew as mm -hmm. you shout orders and everything and talk you could potentially do charisma just to call okay. your crew to order efficiently sure. so um i i i watch him walk up to take his pose up the top i kind of grumble with no words really or just kind of like a <laughs> under my breath um and then i will cast um uh, uh eagle splendor on myself and march up to the top and start giving orders uh cool. to move the ship all right um go ahead and make the check to see just how well okay you uh have. is that going to be a persuasion sure or okay uh then i'm doing an advantage because yay please don't suck 21. the crew moves with absolute efficiency and um you can see a very slight smile curl up at the edges of the admiral's lips as you Make your way towards Porta Lucine. Can I, as we do that, can I press to digitate just a little bit of extra wind uh, to blow his? I assume he's wearing a wig, but just because he sounds like that kind of a person, like a powdered wig, but maybe not. Um, just a little bit to make it sure. feel a little yeah. bit more epic. You do see some black curled hair kind of going past his shoulders just a little bit, and he kind of. Um... You can see as soon as he feels the wind, he sort of re um, uh, <laughs> positions himself just so it hits him perfectly. Ah, uh, yes. Just want to Freaking do guy. I want to do this. Is Sparta I want him? But yeah, carry on. <laughs> and you bring the Pixie's Fury into port to one of the most beautiful cities you've ever seen. Um, Damn, son. <laughs> I think I'm saying for our, thinking for our um, sense, it's sort of Renaissance looking. Um, all of the buildings look immaculately clean. There are groups of people walking about in finery. Everyone you see, even the dock hands, have really nice clothing on from what you can see. All of them wearing carnival masks, though. Um, every single person pretty much that you see is wearing a carnival mask, carnival mask from the very dock hands to the um, vendors walking around with hand carts selling things and they all wave at each other in extravagant manners. And um, you can now smell roasting meats and other things sort of drifting from this uh, uh, general area of 
Port Alusine. Um, as soon as you dock, the um, Admiral turns and says, Welcome to Port Alusine. She's a jewel, is she not? Beautiful as anything I've ever seen or more. Very courteous of you. Very courteous. Now, now that you have docked, would you care to state what your business is here? Uh, the short of it is we are investigating some personal matters. A uh, clue has put us in the direction of your beautiful city, and we hope to track that down. I see. Well, I will be busy preparing for the masquerade for the next two days or so. Ah, it should be a grand one. Make yourselves at home. The, well, the welcome of all of us is graciously extended to you. Prepare, mm -hmm. I shall depart now. And you see a bunch of um, soldiers around the dock sort of get this gangway up and prepare and actually form like a formal line with a sword salute for him to pass through as he goes down. Sweet. And you hear them again calling out, uh, Disembarking His Grace Jean Francois, Duke de Lorchener, Lord Admiral of the Grand Fleet of the Mentlier, High Chancellor, Third Resurrected Order of the Unbelievable. All of that repeated again as he descends and starts to um, walk to a carriage which has been prepared for him, door open. He do they even have a language or do they just speak in an accent? <laughs> Are they just French? <laughs> <laughs> They're a little bit French. His name is Jean-Francois um, Duc oh, de la So I, before the, his, his assistant person, uh, the guy with the full mask, um, before he leaves, I'd like to catch him and say, um, if for some reason we needed to get in touch with his excellency, how would we do so? Uh, you may, uh, you may call upon him by sending a letter to his chateau. Thank you. It's how civilized people do things, Mariah. Some people like to be asked what their preferences are, Saran. Oh, I wasn't aware. I just assumed because he's a he's clearly a highly ranking person that he would do it the civilized people. I I must ask, have you come for the masquerade? I. Uh, I believe we were unaware that such an event was taking place. <laughs> Surely you joke. No, we didn't. A lot know on our plate happening. lately. Ah, that is interesting timing, anyway. If you are looking for information, well, anyone who knows anything will be at the Donner Estate in three days' time for the Grand Masquerade. <sighs> Invitation, of course, is completely necessary. As is, and he kind of raises a nose to you, Mariah. Appropriate dress. Be a very nice girl. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> like no, I said fine. they're civilized. <clears throat> We're going to talk about that later. <laughs> Terrain smiles ingratiatingly at the, like, is there against anything like, like else you know. Or may I be at my liberty? <laughs> I don't let us detain you any further. Have a pleasant day. That, that is was most good. appreciated. What was this guy? What was this guy's name? This guy is um uh uh, uh Lieutenant Lucien Laboudet. We're gonna need all of this in a text uh, Lucien format. Laboudet. My request still stands. <laughs> So here is the um, here's the full text of uh, the admiral. Oh my! Oh my God. God. <laughs> Thank you. I, I wanted this so badly. This Grace oh, Jean Francois word. Duc de, Duc la Roche Noire. Roche Noire. Cool. Lord Amazing. Re-resurrected. Not weird. Just 
One might resurrected. be a weird translation. You never know. Re-resurrected. Amber Lily. I don't like things with amber in them. <laughs> <laughs> triggered. <laughs> Hashtag triggered. Yes. I love how occasionally some of them are with a, <laughs> they're written in French. Navigateur extraordinaire. Oh, I know. I thought the, the same palace. thing. Oh. Distinguished barrier. Distinguished. <laughs> um, of the I, uh, after uh, he and the rest of the retinue depart, I will uh, turn towards Sarayan. The flegaton. Let's maybe not make assumptions about what people do or do not know. Let's go buy you a dress, you tramp. <laughs> Sarayan doesn't understand. Who are you talking to, Priya? <laughs> Obviously you. But also... the, four, the four women. <laughs> he's the he's got a big <laughs> riddle on his face. He's look. talking to Mariah. Okay. But, so, Sarayan doesn't... Because, remember, Sarayan often needs an explanation yeah. for why. Um... And so she just feels like Mariah snapped at her for no reason. And so she's feeling like very confused about what she did wrong. And ordinarily she would turn to Melvin and she almost does and starts to walk over to him. I imagine they make eye contact and she Remember thinks better of it and then turns and walks away. <laughs> I will turn to Priyan and I'll say, Ivan haven't worn a dress in 20 years and I don't plan to start again. So I will find myself a pantsuit and that will be fine. Okay. I'm gonna ask Grulok if he knows how to dance. He will clear his throat and continue um, helping to dock the ship. Swabbing the deck. <laughs> <clears throat> You're not um, a dancer? And as you guys descend, a couple of vendors have assembled. Um, all of them in beautiful, in pretty nice A vendors and, um, assembled! One of them has a tray of food that uh, they call out and they're like, uh, they say, Dignitaries from Saltmarsh! Try the most uh, famous meat pies and dried vegetables of the Chabotot family. Please. What, what kind of pies? Meat pies. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly vegetarian. Triggered! <laughs> it is what we are famous for, though. No. Uh -huh. I'd love one, thank you. Okay. No. It sounds delicious. What would you like to? He, they're holding out a tray that has a line of um, vegetables in the front and then some meat pies in the back. And he kind of holds it out to you. Oh, which one would you like? I'll have some pie. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to cast Detect Magic. If you, if you reach out and take one? <laughs> no, I'd, I'd just say I'd like one of them. Thank you. Ah, okay. And they kind of rotate the tray around and then. Ah, hmm. uh, thank you. Uh, how much? At, at your leisure. Ah. Um, five silver per for the pie. Oh, thank you. Wow. I'll I hand detect over, magic. Hand over five silver. You just hard cast it. Yeah, I, I, I can't. Yeah, I. Bah! I yeah. You detect no magic. <laughs> okay, I, it's well, it, it's not like a. It's like a humming under my breath kind of thing, but I taste it. Good. Um, they kind of as they they kind of bow and then start to sort of shoo away as they've sold one to you and um you take a bite and there's this oh that at first is like that's a nice crispy crust and oh what is in here it's almost like a weird like meat paste that you bite into and you swear you get some gristle like that fat that doesn't render and maybe some mm. tendons and it's kind of like a bit of a mm. chew and like you feel the grease just kind of fill into your mouth and you're like or shadow I'll check it this is lemon's meat pie savory and sweet pies so there anything uh, I open it up it? um that's what it, it looks it's just this weird ground meat almost like meat paste inside and um inside a you know pie or whatever does it and taste horrible is, it doesn't taste good. It's maybe heavily spiced, way too salty. Um, 
if people. this is a uh, <laughs> if this is some sort of allegory for what we're going to find here in Port Lucerne. Pretty on the outside. <laughs> disgusting on the inside. Gotta wonder what's underneath all those masks. As we're looking around, Nether is going to try and get an idea if there's any sort of subtle um, language that's being spoken with the types of masks, um, expressions of the mask, colors, that sort of thing. Is it just are we Are we departing the ship? Sounds like it. Then okay, I just um, I just want to confirm uh, I'll, since I'll look around. what just, Sean I'll... was suggesting seemed to suggest that. I dropped the pie in the water when no one's watching. watching. <laughs> Also, uh, should we give the crew shore leave? Um, how about we let them rotate out? Um, I don't want the ship to oh, be yeah. totally, yeah, like yeah, rotate out, and all Gorlak can't leave. Right. <laughs> all right. Um, there should be enough people on the ship at all times to uh, sh- uh, sh- take it out if need be. Yeah, your officers or your um sort of petty officers or not petty officer that's like a rank your um midship tenants as mid your midshipmen can handle that they will uh, be able to uh, sort of dole out those responsibilities do half and half watches and shore leaves and such and that should be fine half of the people will stay on the ship at all times half can be on shore leave that kind of thing while still awesome. making sure they're okay for watches uh good so nether please make a perception check as you are watching this busy town <sighs> bustling about well, I leave my weapon on board. Bloop. Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, looking around, you don't notice a pattern. Um, there are... Uh, one thing you do notice is that a lot of the masks and the hats right now have feathers, and some of them, it looks like you can see in passing and as doll gets really close people have maybe tucked feathers into masks where there weren't feathers before right now and you can see people um like going around a corner in private and just adjusting the feather and kind of frantically looking in a mirror and adjusting adjusting and then resuming a stance and then going and strutting on the street there are also um there's a time when you see a, a carriage and a horse going and this one person is walking and um the horse sort of defecates and as it sort of splashes, the person looks down and sees that their shoes have gotten a little bit covered. A normal thing in any Forgotten Realm city or Sword Coast city you've seen before. But this person makes a very quick walk to around an alley where they can't be seen. And as doll sort of follows, you see them um, frantically looking for things and just um, brushing the um, horse manure off of their uh, pant leg and then as it won't go off of the um, uh, shoe they just frightened look around and just uh, uh, they have these very shiny shoes they lick their hand and then try to polish off their shoe after cleaning off and then they collect themselves and kind of start to gag for a second and then collect again and then strut back out onto the street I think that we're going to have a little bit of difficulty fitting in here. Hmm. Um, Mel- Melvin casts prestidigitation on himself to clean himself up a little. Um, he adjusts his collar, and he's a fairly prim and proper person, so all I need is a mask now. Uh, speaking of which, I would like to retrieve from wherever it lies, and if it isn't specifically in someone else's pack, I will say my pack, the mask that we found on uh, the ship, the sinking ship, Mm -hmm. and just kind of look at it for in closer detail and see what markings there might be on it, if any. Okay. Are you doing this outside Uh, or just on the ship? Are you going with your companions? I I will do, that will be the last thing I do uh, before disembarking. You know, everyone's starting to make their way. I might, I might start to walk down and be like, wait a minute, let me do this really quick. And then I will follow close behind after. Yeah. This one that you're looking at has a, um, clearly looks like it's meant to look like a fox. Orangish in color. um, And has a clear fox-like nose and shape. Okay. And it has a little handle where you can hold it up to your face. Okay. Do we want to? By contrast, all of the people have 
strap so they are mounted permanently on their face mm-hmm. that you see. Interesting. I'll make note of that and put it away and catch up with everyone else. Do we want to fit in? <sighs> I look good as it is. You will notice that people are Compared eyeing to them. you as you're walking through the streets. Um, Successfully investigating here might require us to not stand out as much. So, Nether uses the hat of disguise to make herself look a little taller. She looks around and copies a dress of someone that she's seen. She gives herself a white mask that appears to be lined in platinum and a massive feather headdress that has like birds of paradise feathers that just come out in a wide peacock-like uh, array. Oh yes, that's very under the radar. Sarayan mm-hmm. um, will definitely in her possession have something that she can wear to fit in in this sort of environment. Um, and so she will have changed into that um, on the ship before disembarking, even eschewing her boots. You you see a couple as this happens, as Nether um, departs, you can see um, walking and is walking up the street, you can see a, a group of a couple of women. Oh, they're kind of applauding and um, doing like little bowing motions and oh, exquisite. Very nice, very nice. It makes a very exquisite. gracious nod towards them. Mm-hmm. And you, I'm sure we'll love to see her do that. Huh? She will certainly dance with her. Yes, yes. Oh, I, I would hope she would dance with that. I'd love Shit. to see it move. Oh, that would be wonderful. And then um, you, as Sarayan comes down, oh, wow, we exotic. Mm, very, uh, so, very, can I tell you? Very foreign. Very What I've exotic. imagined for her dress. <laughs> yes, please do. So, all right. So Saran's dress um, has a fitted bodice and the top portion of it looks relatively normal. It's a corseted bodice um, with like the sort of like puffy sleeves at the top that <laughs> then slim down the arm. So it's our classic um, shape of sort of like ball gown, like mm-hmm. ever after Cinderella's <laughs> dress. So it's got like the the full skirt and all that stuff. Um, and the fabric itself is very fine. It's this iridescent sort of um, almost like just golden fabric, but very light. So almost like the color of like straw. Um, or hay, so just a very light golden yellow. But then on top of it, the accent pieces are all like shells. And so she's got shells along the top of the bodice and then like lines of small conch shells. Oh, they almost look like puka necklaces. (laughs) But it's like that she's got like lines of like conch shells that sort of drape along in tiers along either side of the dress and she's also got her hair kind of piled very messily and haphazardly on top of her head but secured with a large um hair piece that is very fine and has definitely it's expensive (laughs) Because money's no object, but it's expensive. And it has um, like the symbol of persona and uh, the triton kind of like as the main parts of it. But she's got that and that's looks like, she wears it almost like a fascinator. I'm convinced she's not wearing the right spot on her head, but. <laughs> What is going on? We're we're losing you, Liz. Wow. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yep, she's gone. The fashion was too much for Usually, yeah, the fashion zoom, was too much. Let alone Demet Leo to handle. She broke zoom. No. There you it's are. Too beautiful. Okay. We just Wait, you, you lined out I'm at back. the end of the description I'm there. We, we missed all of it. Oh. You have to start again. No, stop. <laughs> no. Uh, no. It's great. Really and you see, fascinator, but that's fine. The, the um the ladies are looking at you and commenting and you can tell they're not sure what to think. Um they're like, it's nice, but it's not it's not right. It's just, it's not right. It's very it's 
very foreign and it's exotic but maybe next year you know kind of attitude it's 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 very nice well done but it's just it's not done right um and Sarayan um begins to have flashbacks to entering every place that she's ever entered where this has been like a ball or a dance or something and feeling she's seen these re responses before and yeah. you can see her blush a deeper coral and she looks down very very <laughs> self-consciously yeah. at the ground and hurries away <laughs> and as um so there are a couple more vendors again coming by to try and sell you just little strange little food bits masks different pieces of very simple jewelry kind of and um uh then suddenly all of their heads turn as if they're hearing something that you can't and then you hear it to wheels on wooden wheels on cobblestone and a beautiful carriage painted red pulls down the street between the the winding cobblestone streets and near to the dock where you guys are um just beginning to set down the streets it's pulled by um six black horses and um a um uh sds is painted on the side of the door and it is this deep crimson red it is absolutely beautiful and the door opens and a hunched over man with leathery skin and a mask completely covering the entirety of his face gets out and kind of starts limping around where is the dignitary from salt marsh you're muted me no it me um oh. All of us collectively, sir. Mm. All of you. Then you're all to be guests of honor, I assume. Guests of honor at an event that is coming up, certainly, yes. All right. No footmen, then. All guests of honor. Seven. And he adjusts the invitation. Um, uh, uh, Her eminence, the Duchess Cedra Tonnerre does invite you to the Grand Masquerade in two days' time. She requires promptness and proper dress. Your attendance is expected. And we he will hands be there. a single envelope as an invitation, and then you can see everyone just staring at him. And he then moves and says to the, one of the ladies and points at two of them. Uh, huh? Jacqueline Laberge, your presence is requested by Cedra Donner at the Grand Masquerade. You may bring one guest. And then turns to the other, um, Charlotte Lacroix. Your presence is required at the Grand Masquerade. You may bring one guest. He kind of shuffles over, looks at the third woman, and then just passes by, and she... Oh, you can see shit. her hands just begin to shake. And she almost falls down as the other two catch her. Um, you can hear them whisper, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay, you're fine. You look great. You look great. And she's like, no, I just, I, I bought, how, I just bought these. So you look great. Like, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Please don't let it get me. They say, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You won't die. It won't get you. You'll be okay. Oh, shit. This and that is, is like where we I knew you were going to end it. Red Death yeah. stuff going too, on here. I know. 